everybody, and welcome to another episode of Express Lane, the show that brings you speedruns in 60 minutes or less. I'm your host, Asuka424, back in my original, like, normal place of streaming, which is awesome, and occasional guest hosts of two sleeping corgis that aren't anywhere near here, but that's okay. Anywho, before I get talking, I have two quick things I have to mention. First and foremost, HDQ 2025 is going to be live from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and it's going to be from January 5th through the 12th. Registration and hotel booking are now currently open, so visit to blah, blah, words, visit gamesdonequick.com and check the AGDQ 2025 important date section to learn more. And also a little kind of important thing called the AGDQ 2025 games list is now out. So go on over to gamesdonequick.com slash games to check it out and just let us know what you're super excited to see. Uh, there's some bangers on there and you're gonna wanna check them out so go do that but after the show because um personally yeah it's november but you know my favorite holiday is halloween and halloween just doesn't end with the 31st uh so yeah when celebration of halloween plus five more days i brought on a four pack of some really really fun spooky season games We've got everything from silent hill 2 enhanced edition to castlevania simply a night nightmare cart and we are gonna start off with a really fun run of cult of land with clockwork ophelia take it away hello 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 everybody welcome hello. in we are going to be doing Cult of the Lamb Marriage Percent today, which is a fun, quick little run. Uh, it kind of takes us through the first little biome of the game. So we go through Darkwood. We get to see setting up of the cult. Um, but outside of that, it's a quick little run. It's fun. It uh, stops time when we kiss our spouse with the marriage ritual. I am sitting here on the new game options, which is one of the things that they added in... I can't remember which update, but there are a few things. We don't run any of the marriage percent category with these new options. Um, I've been thinking about talking to people if we want to do quick start, but I don't really know how it would change the run. However, you know, we sit here. I like to sit on this menu because in the most recent update, they actually put a little bit more menu flash in. So for me, this is just a lot more comfortable to sit on the eyes. But um, we're going to get into this. Time starts when we get into, uh, when I hit accept here. So we'll get into this and we'll start talking about the run. In three, two, one. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> a little, little false start. I'm sorry. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Good luck. Helps if you're clicked into your game, right? <clears throat> nah. <laughs> <laughs> So this is Cult of the Lamb. We are an adorable lamb who um, most of us in the community have named Lambert. And Lambert is going to run a cult. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry to let you know this chat, but if you're here, you might have joined a cult. Yay! Oh, wait. No, it's a good cult. It's a good cult. Yay! I promise. I am, I am okay. a benevolent cult leader. I'm okay with that then. <laughs> so we start off a little slow. Um, so Lambert was, you know, one of the people in, in the forest before. We see these lovely uh, friends. Sure, friends. We'll call them friends. They talk yeah. a lot, but we don't actually talk to them much. We're going to take a quick little nap here. And we're already ready for the run. Oh. Hello, Lambert. Lambert is probably the cutest, cutest cult leader you will ever come across. But this is our new boss. Um, we're just going to call him the one who waits. It's fine. Yeah. And he's going to ask us if we would like to join a cult or start a cult. And we have two options. Yes or absolutely. Really good choices, right? Uh, yeah, I love it. This used to be skippable. It's not anymore. They've changed a couple things in the update, and uh, I've I've lost mm -hmm. all ability to get a PB because of it. Oh no! <laughs> but oh no, we're awake again, and we have Ooh. a sword, Ooh. as one does. So you would think that you need to actually fight people to leave this room. You don't. You just need to leave. That's fair. 
So we're going through, in this first run, we kind of learn a bunch of the mechanics. You learn to roll, you learn what your attack is. Um, and we can't actually take any damage, because as you see, I don't have a heart meter. A lot of the roguelike aspect of this is getting resources for the cult aspect. So like food, wood, gold. Don't worry about it, but I'm not picking up that gold. It's fine. Um, I've recently discovered it freaks out a lot of people who have watched me do these runs recently. You don't actually need to pick the stuff up out of the chest. The one who waits will provide. Oh. So we're going to pick up our first cult member here. I've been getting the hedgehog a lot as my first cult member. I'm starting to think it's good luck. I would say, how many different options do you have for the first cult member? Um, it really depends on how many of the DLCs you have. So you can have quite a few of them. Um, I have most of the DLCs mm. because I play too much of this game. Um, but yeah, that was our first run. There. We got uh, a single gold piece because that was all we needed. And we got a follower because that was actually what we needed out of that run. Yay. I played this back when it came out and all I can remember is a lot of poop. That has not changed. <laughs> we don't see a lot of poop in the run, however, but if you play the game casually, picking up after your cult is one of the mechanics. Um, that little input right there, remembering to actually hit easy, is the hardest input in this entire game. I'm just going to randomize this. We're oh. going to go with a ladybug because that's a cute little ladybug. Technically, that's it. time loss, but I want to show y'all how cute fine. this game is. <laughs> Ratau is going to kind of tell us that we need to take care of people in our cult. I guess we can do that. <laughs> I said something, I'm benevolent. Something benevolent cult leader, yeah. <laughs> I said I'm benevolent. I'm just also a little lazy. So we need a certain amount of stones, berry, and logs to create the cooking pot, which I'm just going to slap down there. And we are going to cook a singular meal. And that's all the cooking we are going to do for our cult. Sorry, y'all get to be hungry. You're, you're poor little hungry cultists. What Ritao just told us is we need to get some gold because uh, the cult needs gold. Uh, all religion needs gold. Um, but we're going to be going through some of our runs here. There is a quick little flashing white lights warning um, as we open this up. So just a little flash. They've made it not too bad, but it can be a little distracting, a little harsh on your eyes. But we're going to go into our first biome here, which is Darkwood. And yeah, chat's got your back. One one girl's lazy is another girl's efficient. Exactly. We're efficient here. Exactly. We're an efficient cult. It's only three days. Nobody needs more than one meal in three days. So everything in Cult of the Lamb, when we go on these runs, uh, these maps are procedurally generated. I'm hoping that I choose correctly. Um, I did. That's good. We had two options there. One of them was to go and see the tarot card dealer, which we actually don't want to see Clownek. And when we see Clownek, we want to avoid talking to them because it takes forever. Uh, wood. Mm. Okay. This is actually quite nice because this is a easy source of wood that I don't have to harvest. Nice. Perfect. And that makes the run faster. But yeah, when we see uh when we see Clown Neck, we don't actually want to talk to them because they reveal the tarot cards. It's this whole cutscene. But because it's a big mechanic and this is kind of the tutorial area, the game really wants us to do that. So it's going to keep throwing that room 
into the kind of mix and into the pathway that I need to take until I actually talk to Clownick. However, again, we're not going to do that. Gotcha. And I can tell what room Clownick is in is because of those little um, suns and moons that are hanging by it. Okay. I didn't get a chest on that. That was interesting. But we had a very good run there. We made no bad choices and we didn't have to go see anything about tarot cards. We also didn't nice. pick up any gold. Now, as I said, we came here for gold. Good. So what are we gonna do? Hmm. Hmm. Off to the cult with you. Yay! Now that's gold, that's just not the gold we actually need. But see, the one who waits provides. You actually cannot leave the room until you collect the rewards there. So that is where we get our gold for creating the altar. It is faster than waiting around for the rewards in each of the rooms. Huh. Uh, I'll take two minutes and 20 seconds for second run. That's not too bad. Mm -hmm. So as I said, a lot of this is just going through essentially the tutorial of the game. Um, so harvesting resources, indoctrinating people to the cult. It will go the fish. I like that fish. That's a good fish. That is a, that is a very happy fish. <laughs> and I'll put you on chopping trees just because they need to be able to do something and um, it'd be nice to have a little bit more space, even though I'm not going to actually use it in the run. But it allows for passive resource collection, which we only really need in the beginning here. Jeff. Oh, yes, Narwhal. Yes, definitely. Narwhal. <laughs> And we're going to set them to worship for us. So that gives us our divine inspiration, which allows us to unlock the temple. And the temple is the core of our cult. We're going to do oh so much in the temple. <laughs> I need stones. Of course I need stones. I just love a chat. Free t-shirt free club groups. <laughs> yes. Everyone gets a free t-shirt. No, I don't want to talk to you. I help you with this. Thank you. <laughs> free t-shirt with every cult membership. A free t-shirt and one meal every three days. <laughs> I have enough stone. Oh, this is the setup here uh, for this layout has not been kind to me. So I'm trying to get enough stone so I can build my church. <laughs> okay, there we go. Nice doesn't really matter where you put your cooking pot and your church. I like to put them up here because it's fast, they're easy to access, and it just works out for me. A lot of this run kind of, especially in placement, is what feels most comfortable for you. Okay. So we're going to preach our sermon. Um... And this is literally the only time we're going to engage in this part of the cult mechanics. As I said, we're a great cult leader. Yeah. <laughs> you guys get one meal every three days, a free t-shirt, and... One free sermon? One free sermon, that's it. And you get to come to my wedding. That's the most important part. <laughs> awesome. So Ratao is talking about how we have now unlocked command stone fragments. Command stone fragments are what we use to unlock new doctrines, to unlock new rituals. And in this case, it is what we actually need very much to get to marriage percent. We need in total nine commandment stone fragments. This is when the RNG of the run kind of starts. And I'm not going to deny I had extremely terrible RNG on my run earlier today. Oh no. So... Who's still alive? Oh. 
I don't know, that, that bird over there looked really shady. <laughs> Unless she was a little bit late to our meeting. <laughs> Uh, this is a scripted event. Leshy will start, will come in over and talk to you. It spawns some enemies that you have to fight. Um, I forgot to talk about weapons. So as we unlock, we have a couple different weapons we unlock. We start with sword, then we get the axe, which is what I'm going with now. There is also the dagger and the gauntlets. Um, I am a sword friend. I like how the sword swings. The axe is great. It's just slow. Not the slowest weapon in the game, though. Fair. Now, do you have to use the same weapon throughout the entire like dungeon, if you will, or um, can you change if it up? You can change it up if it works for you. I. It gotcha. depends on if I get, you know, a weapon. This is really good RNG. Um, so Yay. this is the cat merchant. The cat merchant gives us a free commandment stone fragment. Hey, that is that is the RNG I did not get on my earlier run today, which is surprising because it is very infrequent that happens. But if you get provides. offered a uh, <laughs> if you get offered a weapon, you can definitely take it. It will be a little bit of time hmm. loss, but if you're more comfortable with something like a sword, feel free to take it. I usually do. Gotcha. This is Harrow. Harrow is friend-shaped, and they give us a little bit of lore. They also give us three free commandment stones. No, not nice. that nice. I have... I always forget I have magic. Um, yeah, I will stop for like upgraded magic. If I see that it's a sword over an axe, I will take that any day of the week because I'm more comfortable with that weapon, even though the axe is usually what people prefer to run with as mm -hmm. it is, it, it hits hard. That's fair. I am, I am taking the extra uh, spell upgrades because it's, it's nice to have a little bit of extra safety in a run. Makes sense. Okay. And we're back to our next like mini boss fight. I love the character designs of this game so much. Oh, it's much. so good. The transformations are some of my favorite ones on like all of the big bosses where Leshy transforms and Shimura transforms and all of that. They're mm -hmm. so, so good. We also get a commandment stone fragment at the end of every run. So that's at least guaranteed and where you can kind of figure out where stuff is going to happen. You're going to get mm -hmm. one at the end of every run. You're going to get four runs in in a like marriage percent run and you will get those extra three commandment stones from Harrow. So you can kind of go there and do the math and go, you have to figure out where you're going to get two extra ones. We were lucky. We got that RNG. We got one of our extra ones. Very, very nice. happy about that. Uh, I need to declare a doctrine. <gasps> okay. Um, Asuka? Yes? Will the sheep be nude or will they be bashful? <laughs> uh, I am all for the fleece of the natural. Yeah, okay, naked sheep time. We're also going to declare our first doctrine. And this is what is going to open up rituals. Um, also the other doctrines that we can do. And we need to go down the law and order tree to unlock our marriage ritual. Love it. I actually picked this uh, run up because I started, I did comms for somebody else's hotfix run. And we had so many bad puns on that one. <laughs> we are now looking for bones because bones are what is needed to conduct rituals. Would you say you would, you're going to have to fleece the enemies for some bones? Oh my gosh. 
Oh. <laughs> okay, so the game... The game has forced oh, oh, us to see. come see Cloudak, but we're not going <laughs> to talk to them. We're going to skim along that edge there and just avoid that conversation entirely. Um, you it. can and will get pulled into the conversation with Cloudak if you take a single step forward there. I have had oh, it happen. Geez. So uh, I entered owl streamer mode. <laughs> Um, it's a it's a very effective anti tarot card <laughs> defense. So this is actually one of the better rooms. Like this is a guaranteed room. You will have this uh, encounter where a bunch of the old gods come and they talk to you. But this room is great because, as you saw when I came in, there were a bunch of bodies lying around. Bodies all have these skeletons in them. Skeletons, as one might know are full of bones. Today I learned. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I <laughs> thought you might have known. Um. Let's, uh. let's just say lately I've been finding all of the burning knowledge. I guess we'll go this way. I was hoping for another cat merchant, but... Uh, or I may have missed that. Okay, no, that was a person merchant, which is a phrase. These rooms are great. Uh, I don't have to fight anything. I don't have to harvest anything. I just get to run through and very quickly progress on. Nice. Okay. Ow. There are different conditions that can come up with uh, the rooms. Oh, you're... Thanks, Aim. I appreciate you. Uh, this, remember how I said that it's really gonna mm. try and make us talk about uh, the tarot cards? Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, mer here. that merchant is the equivalent of wanting to talk about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> Completely. It's the perfume dealer at the uh, at the at the Sears. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, Sears is Sears still a thing? Um. No? Question mark? Possibly, I don't know. Chat, help us out. Yeah, chat, is Sears still a thing? You, you might get a free cult t-shirt if you help us. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, <laughs> and I promise I won't sacrifice you. <laughs> Can I have a sword, please? That's not a hey, sword. What? <laughs> That's a better dagger. That's not a sword. That's a sword you have at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Oh. Uh, you know what? I have a diseased heart. That'll hit me. Thank you. I have a diseased heart. That means if I take damage, they take damage. So sometimes we will use that. There's I nine Sears locations? That, that makes me feel sad and old. Same. <laughs> so as you saw there, we just got another commandment stone, gold, and the most important, we got some bones. So we've got enough hey. bones to perform all of the rituals we need. Nice. We now have the ability to read minds. Ooh. Chat. I know what you're thinking. Literally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we need to come here and we need to perform our <laughs> ritual. And we're going to perform the bonfire ritual. It's just burning a bar bonfire. It makes everybody happy. <laughs> it works. It's fine. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Now, Ratao is going to tell us about one of the other things, and this is a very, very wonderful strat. 
we can now give our cult members gifts. We can raise their level. When we raise levels, we get commandment stone fragments. So that is how you can get those last little bits that you need for your commandment stones. Ah. There is one small issue with this run, and that is in Cult of the Lamb, you can only declare one doctrine in a day cycle. As you can see up in the corner there, there is a small little circular clock. You can only declare a doctrine once per day. So uh, because I declared the doctrine, the bonfire ritual doctrine to start, I am now going to wait around until I can declare another doctrine so that we can start moving down our law and order chain and get that marriage uh, ritual going. So, uh, Oscar, do, do, how are you doing today? How are the corgis? Uh, they are they are doing a happy snooze. Uh, Freya is, what's what letter is for Freya for me? She has formed a C. She's, she's like mostly rubber with a hint of like water mm-hmm. and just, it, it is entirely a contortionist. The well, positions that, is... that corgis specifically get into when they sleep yeah. are so weird. Yeah. Like beautifully they, weird, they... but weird. They're extremely weird. I think I'm a little early. I am very early. <laughs> uh, sadly, we can only wait outside of the church, but there is a little wait thing that does allow you to pass time a little bit faster, which is nice. Nice. one tree in the bottom left that's just getting absolutely destroyed. Oh yeah, but no. standing strong. Yeah, one of one of our one of our cult cultists is just having at it and I appreciate them. They are wonderful. <laughs> they will they will earn their keep. Nice. And as I said, I am polite. I did not choose the murder follower ritual. I chose the ascend follower ritual. That's not because that's just the easiest one to pick. You only have to move your control stick a tiny bit. Nah. We're going to go on another run. We're looking for more of those commandment stone fragments. Um, I completely forgot to explain part of the actual plot of the game. As you've noticed, we've been going on these runs through Darkwood, and each time we've gone through and hit the end, there's been a little tick that's happened around a doorway. Don't worry about it. It's not important. Not at all. Okay, that's fair. Why, 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 why dagger? I, I don't, I don't <laughs> want that. <laughs> I did see um, a cat merchant, so that's actually really nice. I think the game's trying to say I'm sorry for the run that it gave me earlier today. Okay, I'll take that for free. <clears throat> But when you grab them, when you grab them from the floor, you don't have to do the whole animation. So you can just kind of pick up the extra little boosts that the tarot cards are. Well, that's fair. This way. Um, I call this, I usually actually call this the Baka Meow because the cat says Baka Meow. So that usually when I'm running into this room, I just am running past, grabbing the uh, command stone and just shouting, fuck him, y'all. Love it. Now, what was the difference in the two sword rooms right there? There were like these little icons up above the room. So there are like- different, like, I wouldn't say buffs, but you can have times where you'll say gain a... You'll gain a tarot card, but you'll lose a red heart. You'll have double gold drop from um, from enemies. You'll have food drop instead of gold, which can be very helpful in a casual playthrough. In a um, in a speed run, we aren't that particular about it because you want to be like if you can find one where your path takes you through no combat rooms. That's, mm-hmm. I need to remember I have magic. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I have, I have second place for this and I still forget about magic all the time. <laughs> Fair. Uh, I, you don't want to pick up stuff like that. That was a decoration. Um, mm-hmm. 
it just opens your menu. It's time loss. Ah, I chose poorly. So we oh, just no. have to clear that room. Oh, fisherman. This is my Ooh. favorite character. Uh, his mouth is on the top of his head, but his mustache is under his nose, which is on his face. And I love him. Oh my God. <laughs> I, t I point that out to everyone who uh, is who does stuff, and every single host is like, I have never noticed that. Thank I, you for pointing it I, out to me. That That is perfection right there. Right? Oh, all of the animal forms are so funny. Um, I really wish... When, when I do this for marathons, I will give myself, like, extra time and go with... Um, like, if someone wants to put in a dono, we can put their, their name in for the follower and, like, create follower forms. Oh, and it, nice. it, can get, it can get really silly because my favorite follower form is the Sphinx cat. Um, mm -hmm. I, I love the Bingus cat. Oh, uh... Oh. Hmm. I don't think that's friend-shaped. I don't know about you. I think that's friend shaped. It's a nice fun door. Let's go through. Okay. So this is Leshy. Um, you can also do this category. Well, not this category, but another category that is essentially this that's called Leshy percent that ends when you kill Leshy, but you'd be essentially doing marriage percent minus the last little bit. So there's another hmm, category gotcha. if anybody wants to run this. I love just how many different categories are available for people to play. There is so many categories for cults. I think I'm one of the few people currently still running Marriage Percent, but anyone wants to come in, please take my times. Also, nobody worry about what's happening here. These chains, they mean nothing. It's fine. Don't worry about it. We're going to go talk to our boss. They weren't load-bearing chains, so it's okay. Not at all. Um, the game will not let you leave until you pick up that item. That is a unique item to this boss fight. You get uh, four statues in every... You get one statue in every biome when you kill the old, old god that kind of rules over that biome. We have so much bones. <laughs> Quick little meeting with the boss. It's fine. He's really happy with our progress. Yeah. We have a little bit of a flock. A little bit. I have other people that are politely sitting in the void waiting to be indoctrinated, but um, three people is a good enough cult. Yeah. So, we need talk to you because that's actually announcing. There's currently a uh, yeah, I should probably clean that up. Or, yeah, you're going to do that. That is, uh, we don't usually engage in the cleanliness mechanic right there because usually people are polite enough to go to the edges of the area before they um, do their business. But that's not what happened today. So we're just going to clean like, that oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we're on GDQ right now. So um, enjoy my, pre my gifts to the cult leader. <laughs> right? Okay, I'm looking for... There you are. The ladybug. The ladybug we're going to give a blessing to because... Oh, of course you would. Okay, I'm going to wait over here. You should ask what we should name the cult soon. I need to farm for that final... I need to farm for that final um, piece of commandment stone fragment. Mm. So... This is a very fun little backup strat. Sometimes you're lucky enough that you get all of your commandment stone fragments in your runs. You don't need to talk to people. 
But you can come here and this also is another another category extension if once you get to the point that Ritao uh, says you can leave and come talk to him, there's another category that you could play called Knuckle Bones. Uh, Knuckle Bones Percent. I have not played that one, but I do like Knuckle Bones. Uh, we went there to grab the gift that Ritao keeps at the back of his house. Um, I didn't steal it. Not at all. Permanently borrowed. Yeah. That's fine. That. Exactly. Yeah. I'm looking for the ladybug again. Yeah, I know. You're 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 very upset with me for interrupting your conversation. Here. Have a gift. <laughs> it's a statue of me! Aww. Aww. And they are so happy with the statue of me that they give me the final piece that we need for the run. Yay! And we're very happy about that. Just need to wait a little bit longer. Time will be coming up very quickly because we wait to... Uh, I haven't been paying very close attention to my day timer. Um... We just need to declare the doctrine and perform the marriage ritual. And it looks like it's going to be a nighttime wedding, but that's beautiful. Nice. Stars are in the sky. Yeah. And this time they're not offering tarot cards. Nope. Perfect. Um, should we marry the ladybug, the narwhal or the fish? Ooh. Hmm. You know what? We were being nice to the ladybug. Let's let's keep it keep it real with the ladybug. Okay. We did give them a gift. That is that is. Yeah. We did gift. kind of like start something. So time will be coming up on the kiss, and that is time. GG. That was <laughs> Cult of the Lamb Marriage Percent. Quick little run. Um, they, they do give us a tarot card after a wedding. It's it's the cult's gift to me. Um, but that is our quick little run. I really suggest anyone who owns this game, if you're looking for a fun, quick little run, please try this. Easy is such a fun way to get into speedrunning Cult of the Lamb because it's easy. It's not difficult. Yeah. You have so much safety and so many things that you can play around with. If you want to run the many categories that we have out there, find one. There's so much out there in this game to run. I love this game so, so much. Um, outside of that, uh, I'm Clockwork Ophelia. I don't do a lot of speedrunning. Um, you might hear me on occasion around speedrun marathons. I do some hosting, I do some commentary, but mostly uh, I stream FF14. So if y'all are FF14 fans, uh, hi, I spend too much time in that game. Um, outside of that, uh, I'd love to give some shout outs to the Fatals community. Um, Fatals are fantastic. Uh, I wouldn't have confidence. I wouldn't have picked up speedrunning without Fatals. NBZ uh, in particular, she's an amazing person and specifically Lady Arcaders. Uh, Lady Arcaders is a uh, all women femmes speedrunning group and they are a fantastic, fantastic group. And also quite a few of them are GDQers as well. So. I, that is me, and I'm going to hand it back to you, Oscar. Thank you so much. I love how you, you dressed up. It, it was a very, very classy fig leaf <laughs> for the wedding. I, I love that. But friends, give Gigi's in chat one more time for Clockwork Ophelia. That was such an awesomely cute, fantastic, awesome, scary, creepy, cool run. I love it. It's called Salam, everyone. It's play it. It's fantastic. But before we go and get a hydration break, I just want to remind everybody that... Welcome back, everybody, to Express Lane. Before we head to the next run, of course, I have, I always have stuff to say. And this time, we're going to be talking about Hotfix Season 3. Head over to gamesdumbquick.com slash hotfix to check out our current schedule for Season 3. And check out the schedule for some in-depth looks at this week's runs and the upcoming runs for next week. And then a little bit after that, you'll start to see maybe a new season and new shows. <gasps> but that's later. The, we're not going to worry about later. 
we'll worry about that when later becomes now, which will be soon. But right now, it's not soon, it's now, and we are doing Nightmare Cart with Joker. That was the weirdest intro I've ever done before, and I don't care. So, Joker, please take it away and save me. Okay, but my only question else is, when will then become now? Soon. Thank you. <laughs> Um, yes, as uh, Asuka so eloquently put it, my name is Joker. Uh, this is uh, my pick for uh, Game of the Year 2024. Uh, it's been my favorite game since it released. This is Nightmare Cart. Uh, we will be playing the Refuse category, uh, which is, uh, I'll explain a little bit as we go on here, as I'm visited by a cat. So uh, you may see a furry creature here in the corner or a tail. Um, uh, but yeah, so we'll go ahead and load up a game. So the way that we do these is that we do uh, load up a, a save. Uh, it helps skip the opening cutscenes and and all of that. Uh, so I've got our handy dandy uh, express uh, express lane uh, save slot here. So we'll go ahead and load that up. Time will start when I hit continue. Um, so if everybody is ready, we'll go ahead and get going in three, two, one. Yag. Good luck. Uh, I absolutely adore this game. So Nightmare Cart uh, has been developed by a single person uh, with a, a, some help outside um, of her. But Lilith has been doing most of the major development on this game herself. And it started as a uh, started as a oh, there's my. Uh, left trigger. Hey, we like that. Okay. Uh, it started as an April Fool's Day type of joke um, that uh, took off and really did well. Uh, so she decided to continue to develop it. Uh, this was a re a a kart racing version of her PlayStation One D make of Bloodborne. Uh, it started off as Bloodborne kart, uh, then got hit with the season desist that we never like to see. Um, and so it became Nightmare Cart, uh, legally distinct. Uh, there is some differences here, mostly in names um, of characters from Bloodborne. Uh, but we do, you do know, if you know Bloodborne, um, it you will notice the difference and you will see uh, very similar boss fights, very similar uh, names and whatnot. So. Uh, but this is the this is Bloodborne as a kart racer. Uh, the reason I said nice is so we learned earlier uh, in the previous run that um, bone that uh, bodies have bones in them. Um, one of the other things that I'd like to teach you today, Asuka, uh, is that blood yes. makes us go faster. Oh, OK. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So uh, every cart has a um, every cart has the same starting top speed, um, but they have three different stats between their weight, their size, and their handling. Um, we stay on the Hunter cart. It's got pretty decent handling, which is what we care about the most, but also it's the first cart that you can pick and uh, it takes time to pick a different cart during the run. So we just don't do that. Uh, but we, uh, the reason uh, I we like that first item that I got is there are uh, blood droplets that you can collect by uh, killing monsters on the course um, and by picking up the blood droplet items. Uh, blood droplet increases our tops, our max top speed. Uh, so if you see on the speedometer down there, that red line or the red sword, that is our speed, that is our uh, top speed. Uh, so the more blood droplets we get from the items and from killing monsters on the course, uh, the faster we end up going. Uh, it does have diminishing returns when it comes to our normal top speed um, but it definitely increases with our boosting top speed and there are two different types of boosts we can use we have the regular boost uh, which is fueled by aether vials as you see the numbers in the top left hand corner um, there is also the drift boost which is very similar to a mario kart a type of drift boost where we can uh, drift and then flick the left thumbstick back and forth a couple times that gets our drift boost a lot faster uh, and also allows us to um, do things like what Mario Kart does in Snakey, uh, where if we're on a straightaway, we can initiate a drift uh, and then just get a, a pretty instant uh, drift boost off of that. Hmm. Um, let's see. Okay, not exactly what I wanted to see, but we're, we're sitting decent already with our um, top speed, which is pretty nice. 
Uh, but we've already moved on. We're on Mirlodi Expressway, which is the second uh, course of the game. It's kind of the meat and potatoes of the actual campaign. Uh, you really start to get used to everything. Uh, surprise, you have a big boss enemy that we just so casually avoid because, you know, we don't, we don't need to worry about him. Fair. Yeah. Uh, but it really, this is re really where everything kind of comes into play. We get to really see the design of the courses uh, and the design of the enemies as well, um, as as well as like our other racers. Um, as you, you'll you notice here, we'll start to get more and more and different uh, opponents uh, as the campaign goes on. Everybody just kind of, um, st everybody just kind of joins in. We get werewolves, we get skeletons, uh, we get um, dream watchers, which are the little eyeball dudes. Uh, they're just little guys. They're just little guys. Um, so this is really where things start to pick up, or at least you kind of get the feel for what the game is like uh, in terms of design and control and whatnot. Got it. <laughs> I like how the boss just stood there like, hey, um, did you forget about me? Oh, OK, yeah. bye. Yeah, so he just kind of wanders around. And if there's uh, enemies close by, he'll start to swipe. Um, it's not something that we normally typically have to worry about. Um, I have bugged out this course and gotten knocked out of bounds by him before. Uh, that's really fun um, because you have no Ooh. way to get back in bounds, so you're just kind of stuck. Uh, but thankfully, you know, it's the second course of, of the run, so it's not as if when you run out of bounds, you're losing a whole lot of time. Right. We are we're cooking so far. We got a lot of blood droplets. Uh, there is a max of 1,000 that you can carry, uh, so hitting... <laughs> 700 at the end of the race is, is pretty nice. That does mean we have quite a bit of top speed that we can carry over. Nice. Uh, the AI does uh, does kind of interact weirdly with the course occasionally. Um, sometimes you'll notice they get turned around and they'll start driving backwards. Um, they also will Im almost immediately use any weapon that they have or that they pick up. Uh, so if you um, we want to pick up, when we're in first place, uh, we want to pick up uh, health transfusers. They give us a bit of uh, invulnerability frames, enough that we can completely dodge the essentially the blue shells of the game um, by having them and using them in the right time. Uh, but AI, the AI will use them as soon as they pick them up. I've had cases of getting hit uh, four or five times in a row uh, by the the blue shells and there's just nothing you can do about it if you can't uh actually avoid them with like a health transfuser uh, but we're on to our first uh battle of the campaign uh very very much like um uh uh like, maybe like mario party like the balloon yeah. arena vibes yeah like mario the mario party um um, the Mario Kart uh, fights, or you know, the Mario Kart battles, uh, very twisted okay. metal esque as well. We run around and collect, you know, weapons to try to kill everybody. Uh, this is a team based battle, uh, this one, and it, we need to kill ten enemies. Um, so it can be a little bit uh, easier said than done sometimes, mm -hmm. um, but we're doing all right here so far. Typically, what we want to do is we want to try to hang out around this side here where the enemies spawn, um, especially if we have a pistol. Um, if we have a pistol, we can pretty much uh, one tap uh, any enemy that comes across us. And they're all upstairs, aren't they? There they are. Um, we'll try to use the map there on the side. And this might be actually a good example of, oh no, he went red before. Uh, so you have to shoot at enemies when they're targeted with white. Um, with that little white orb above them. And if it turns red, it means you can't shoot them because they've been hit too much recently. Um, mm. So, uh, un unfortunate on that part. And also seeing that 30 seconds left timer is not great. Um, so, looks like we're not getting any help from our teammates uh, in killing opponents. So, hey, we finally oh, made it. Well, nice. Yeah. We had to pick up all 10 ourselves. Uh, if you get 10 kills in a row, you are blood drunk. Um, so seeing that is, uh, it's nice, but also not really, because that means the team, our team didn't do anything. Like how, how's the aiming in those, those battles? Like, is it auto aim or is it just kind of 
Hope and pray. It's auto aim with uh, a little bit of hope and pray. You do have to kind of, you do have to get lucky, uh, but it is pretty auto aim. Uh, but we are moving into our first boss fight of the run. Uh, this is Father Gregory. Um, everybody say hi to Father Gregory. Hi, Father Gregory. Uh, so this is an actual course. This is an actual arena. So we're doing one lap around um, the Angel Graveyard arena, or Angel Graveyard course. And we're getting bad weapon RNG here. Um, we do, yeah, one lap around the Angel Graveyard course, and then uh, we stick to the Angel Graveyard arena. And please stop dodging back and forth like you always like to do there. Uh, but what we want is we want to get the Hunter Pistol there, uh, because as you can see, Shotgun doesn't really do anything from that far away. The Hunter Pistol gives us a better mm. chance of hitting him. Uh, but now we're in the actual arena portion of the fight, and we have to come and pick up the Moon Shard. So the difference here is there's two main categories. There is um, there is your the Submit Life and the Refuse category. Uh, submit life, there is a decision at the end of the game where we can decide either to uh, refuse an offer that's given to us um, or we submit our life. Um, and by making sure that we pick up the three moon shards, we can face the final boss uh, that will appear when we do select refuse. So there are moon shards that are picked up. Uh, okay, that's good. So we transformed Father Gregory there and we did it before he could pick up the Gatling gun. So that is always very good. Nice. We got a good position here, and Father Gregory's down. Nice. Not great RNG at the beginning of the boss fight, but enough there at the end that we can move on and not have to worry about uh, getting taken down by Father Gregory, as that's no fun. <laughs> but yeah, so we're going to collect those moon shards across three different fight, uh, boss fights. Uh, that was our first one. So we are uh, en route towards the refuse ending. Thanks. This is probably one of my favorite courses in the game, um, mainly because of the music. This is my favorite song in the game. Um, and if you listen, you'll reckon, you'll kind of notice that something about the music doesn't quite fit. Yeah, it's got, a, it's got a vibe that does not match what the visual vibe I'm seeing. Absolutely. But um, the, the Noble Demon uh, did all of the music herself, uh, and she I, I, she absolutely crushed it with the music. Um, bar none. Oh, I love it. Bar none, this is my favorite uh, track on the game, and I just got visceral, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so I got hit by a blue shell, and then somebody either visceral boosted me or shotgunned me, so that's great. Um, we're pretty low on life, which I really need to be careful about. Now I'm going to use that. Uh, health transfusion just to keep myself alive because we have a lot of blood droplets. We picked up two blood droplet items uh, in the first half of the course. So that's really nice. Um, and I don't want to lose my blood droplets. Uh, I don't want to die and lose my blood droplets. So I'm going to make sure they heal there. Because yeah, I that was true. Oops, sorry. I was just going to, I was just going to recap the fact that Blood droplets are our speed, and if we lose them all, we mm -hmm. lose our speed. So obviously, we don't want that to happen. No. The... no. As I as I said, if the AI gets weapons, uh, we're gonna go ahead and just restart uh, because I know mm -hmm. it's not gonna be great here. Um, <laughs> so that can happen if we get hit in midair during a jump. We will just instantly drop, um, oh, wow. and it's worse. It'll go worse because it's also gonna go very slow. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and uh, and restart there. It's absolutely fine. So I noticed during the battle, at one point, um, I saw blood droplets retrieved appear on screen. So did you pick up somebody else's blood droplets? Yeah, most likely what happened was mm -hmm. um, they had the rats. It, there are rats in that arena, so you can pick up blood droplets from them or uh, a blood, the blood droplet item. Um, so most likely what happened was an opponent, uh, an AI character died. Uh, and when you die, you do drop your blood droplets. Uh, so we picked them up from somebody who uh, somebody who died. Uh, gotcha. Which in a race, that is fantastic because that's, you know, extra blood droplets. We don't have to worry about farming um, in a uh, battle. It's it's kind of hit or miss. You don't really care about 
blood droplets as much in battles as you would in a race. We are really getting unlucky with the with the, uh, the aggression of the AI this time around. Um, hopefully, oh hey, okay, double nice. kill. Somebody drops some droplets, so we are. Uh, oh my goodness, we're gonna get hit by another one. I'm pretty sure. I'm probably gonna die here again. <laughs> this uh, this game is is punishing me for something that I don't don't know if I did or didn't do here. Uh, I will be. Tr I am tricking there uh, up off the walls. You can trick in a jump, and it will build up your your aether vials. Uh, and also, if you complete the trick, it gives you a little bit of a um, it gives you a little bit of a speed boost when you land. So we like to trick as much as we can for the most part. Also, that was actually really nice that I was able to grab all of my blood droplets. So uh, we take we take those wins where we can get them. We got another one. Okay, I think I'm just gonna hang onto this health transfusion now because I have enough top speed that I can pass this uh, this AI by without much of an issue. Yeah. And now that we have the safety of the health transfusion, we will be able to do that. <laughs> nice. And that is why I said I'm keeping a hold yep. of that. <laughs> okay, take that as well. That's good. But yeah, you can already see just how the AI can be really, um, really mean in the campaign mode. Um, just in the racing in general, especially if there's uh, a course like this that has a lot of items and the AI is grouped around together. Um, if we are unlucky and somebody in like sixth, seventh, eighth pick, picks up an item, they're more likely to get that blue shell. Mm, gotcha. And if they're grouped together, they're going to use them. But we sh we are we should be we're we're gonna be just fine. We've got almost a thousand blood droplets at this point between the item pickups that we've had, the monsters that we've killed. So we are absolutely zooming. And somebody else dropped some more. Oh, so yeah, there's now our. You're at a thousand, nice. Yeah. So <laughs> as you can see, when we boost, our top speed goes up way high. But normally, our top speed just hangs out around that 90 mile an hour mark. So like I said, it's the actual use of the top speed is it. There's diminishing returns with all the droplets, but uh, having it for our boost is what is the most impactful thing. Mm -hmm. And I am trying to find another. There we go. Another transfuser. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that is, uh, we're uh, losing in here. We've got so much, so much speed, and there we go. Yeah, there was nobody anywhere near you. <laughs> oh no, that was, uh, yeah, we, we were flying at that point. And a 359 is actually halfway decent for like a marathon, um, a, like a no reset run um, type of uh, type of track. So I, I'm, we're, we're right there. That's looking pretty good. <laughs> Love it. This one, I hate this. I love the idea behind this fight. I hate the execution with a passion. Uh, this is our second boss fight. Um, it is a uh, an arena fight, but it is a little bit different than the other arena fights. This is uh, this is kind of like a capture the flag. Uh, we have to pick up the insight. Uh, we'll pick up our second moon shard here, but we have to pick up and capture the insight um, and score it. But this does have my favorite glitch in this game uh, that uh, Lilith it did not patch out on request by the speedrunners, uh, specifically because of how it's used. Um, we we respawn while holding on to the insight. The insight's coded as a weapon, so if you uh, respawn with a weapon, uh, you hang on to the weapon right before the pig oh. gets. So um, we will use that to our advantage, and we will just continue to run into the middle, grab the insight, and then respawn. Now, the problem that we can run into is that the AI can get very aggressive and will hang out around our base because they realize they kind of flock to the insight. So as you can see, we've got three people already running towards the insight. 
at my base. So I'm gonna wait for them to jump, and then we will just fly right on through. That's the best. That's the best uh, sister spy I've oh, had is... in a very long time. That is cool. Nightmare cart giveth, nightmare cart taketh away. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> this is probably aesthetically my favorite course of the game. This is the clock tower, the, the great clock tower. Um, and you can see exactly why it's named the great clock tower here. <laughs> Ooh, I, that's, oh, I love it already. <laughs> that is that is my favorite portion of this is because we do go through uh, the clock here and it teleports us to the bottom of the tower. Um, now, the problem is, is, you know, bottom of the tower where we have to go uphill. Uh, and uphill is is slow in this game. Uh, we lose a lot of top speed for going uphill. Uh, so that's my only quote unquote complaint about this about this course. Uh, uh, but um, we get to at, at least kind of drive through and look through the entire thing. And it's we can this course has one of my other favorite bugs uh, or glitches that we could potentially see near the end of the course or at the end of the course uh, after we complete it and i'll showcase i'll uh, mention it if it happens uh it's very very funny we are doing okay we should be able to at least avoid most of the ai this is another one of those courses where um if we get hit on that jump we actually drop all the way to the bottom of the clock tower That's oh. yes so we um obviously don't want that to happen um, we sh I shouldn't run into that issue now as long as I can get a health transfuser we should not have any issues um, if you notice me breaking right before that jump um, it's because I'm being targeted by a blue shell and I don't want to fall down after the jump but we've got the transfuser so we're good thanks Yeah. There's some discourse in chat. This is legally distinct. Yes, this is legally Better distinct this is Bloodborne card. Uh, again, for, for those who may not have um, been here at the very beginning, this was a uh, this was a <laughs> April Fool's joke that became a full game based off of a Bloodborne demake, a PlayStation One era remake, essentially, or a demake of Bloodborne. Um, and it became the April Fool's joke became so popular that the dev Lilith just decided to run with it and make night make, make Bloodborne cart got hit with the cease and desist by Sony over the uses of the name and the likenesses. So changed up the names uh, and made it legally distinct and made it Bloodborne cart or made it Nightmare cart. Excuse me. And this is no. this is an absolutely free to play game, by the way. This is 100% nice. free on Steam and on Itch. So are most of the tracks pretty straightforward? Are there like shortcuts? Uh, the only the one that has a true shortcut that we've been able to find, um, or at least that's implemented, is the very first course. Otherwise, okay. um, hold on, we got the glitch. Uh, sometimes <gasps> the AI will fall through and- What? <laughs> the AI will fall through that teleporter. And when the AI falls through the teleporter, um, it just falls into nothingness. And the reason it falls into nothingness uh, is because um, there is no kill plane here. Lilith realized oh. there was a soft lock. If the racer dies while under the course, they will not respawn and will not come back onto the course. So if that ever happened during an actual like race, it soft locks and you can't, uh, you can't do it. You have to either restart or go back to the menu. Uh, so she oh. implemented that. Uh, in order to work around the soft lock. Um, and the AI, anytime it's in the air, wants to trick because it uh, reads it as getting extra speed. So it wants to trick and boost. Uh, so it will uh, continually spin as long as it's not being targeted by like a uh, blue shell or anything. Gotcha. We're on to uh, Spawn Camp Simulator. We are gifted with a, a weapon called the Noble Pistol. Um, the Noble Pistol uses Aether Vials to shoot. Um, so these dots will give us more Aether Vials, um, but it has the same power as the regular pistol. So all we do is 
Uh, we sit in front of the uh, enemy spawn. We drift boost and uh, or we break boost to build up our aether vials, and then we just shoot them as they spawn. We're getting unlucky in that they're going to red very early, uh, but otherwise, uh, we just we just sit here for a little bit and we we uh, take them out as soon as they spawn. Hey, my teammate is actually doing something here. Gigi's teammate, let's go. Yeah. It's very nice when the AI actually does something. Uh, it <laughs> right. makes things a lot, lot better for us. No kidding. All right. Now, I think you'd mentioned it before, but uh, a question had come up asking uh, just what uh, Insight does. Uh, insight really doesn't crack much of anything. Um, the Insight is just used as to capture the flag uh, in the um, uh, in that uh, Matilda sisters fight. Um, insight, you do need 30 insight in order to progress to the final boss. Um, that's that's the only thing that it really does. Is you have to get the three moon shards, and then to get the true ending, um, you just have to have the 30 insight or the yeah the 30 insight. It's either 30 or 40. You have to have the max mm. amount of insight. You get three for each race or each event. So. Um, that uh, allows you to see kind of the quote unquote true ending, but for this category, it doesn't matter if you have all of them. Um, you should, unless you somehow, uh, the only way you lose the insight is if you die in the final boss arena, but or in the final boss fight, but it will respawn you and you just get to do it again. So that's the only reason you should, uh, if you're playing this category, you would not have uh, your max insight. We're on to a blood droplet battle. Uh, so the goal here is to collect the most blood droplets. Uh, we're gonna hang out in the area uh, by where all the werewolves are because they do give us the most droplets. Uh, occasionally the enemies will respawn. We get aether vials, which I'm not pleased with because it means that we don't have a weapon to shoot anybody with. We can run over some of the monsters, um, but it takes a couple of shots sometimes. That's tragic. That should not oh. have happened. A teammate picked up our droplets, though, but we are a combination of bad weapons um, and, uh, again, aggressive AI that is uh, hitting us all the time means that we are, um, we were are struggling. We're, gonna, we're struggling for just a little bit. Can I not get Aether Vials? <laughs> no, only, a, this is the only Aether Vial run. Well, and that's, it's, it's a little bit, like, we can't do anything with the Aether Vials besides uh, give us more boost. They're kind of useless to us in this in this arena specifically. Mm, uh, gotcha. Okay. So we... Because we also don't have the, um, the Noble Pistol, so we don't have that weapon that will... Um, uh, there we go. Hey, hey, there we go. So we killed Father Gregory. Picked up all of his droplets. Uh, we oh. we passed the 4,000 droplet goal, so um, that fight can turn very quickly if, if somebody else has the most droplets. Mm -hmm. Okay, Outsiders Mansion is my favorite course. Uh, it's got good music. It's it's Baby Park at home, but it has one of my favorite. It has my other favorite glitch and the showcase of if an AI gets turned around. It will continue to go in the direction that it's going. So it will go backwards because it's intending to try to hit a checkpoint system that it missed. Um, oh. So it will continue to go backwards. Uh, it is funny until you get the hog rider coming up with a shotgun point blank on your face and you you can't do anything about it. <laughs> okay. We also ran into, there's, that's, okay. That was, yep, there we go. So we're going to go ahead and restart there. A, because we got hit by the blue shell, but B, we also got hit in midair. And again, we'd have to turn back around, continue and finish that, finish that lap before we could catch up. So we'll just go mm, ahead. Gotcha. And... Now that's a new glitch. I get to say the thing. That's never happened before. Ooh, yay! Ev everybody starting with the the boost fire is that's that has not happened before. So that is actually kind of funny. Uh, but all right, we also end up starting in first. Uh, I believe if you restart like that, sometimes you'll end up in first and start in first. 
in the earlier courses, uh, we don't necessarily like that because we want to essentially sandbag to try to get blood droplet items uh, to get the top mm -hmm. speed. But as we get later on, the AI will actually use the break boost uh, to start as uh, you should. You can use the break boost to um, boost yourself up a little bit faster at the start. Uh, so we want to continue using the break boost to stay even with the AI and not fall behind too far while trying to get uh, blood droplets. So we will take a first place here, a first place start here, because that means that we can get out in front way faster. Uh, and we still have the opportunity to get droplets from uh, the monsters, uh, you know, on the course. This is going to get a little scary here. We've been caught up with the pack. Okay. I thought I timed that well. Uh, there is another way, uh, or there is another kind of mechanic that we try to use here. Um, when you pick up an item, if you use it a couple of, it's about a, uh, it's a few frames before. Uh, you would run over an item pickup, you get a secondary copy of that item or extra ammunition uh, for any guns. So uh, especially with the health transfusers, if we can time the use of the transfuser right before the uh, the item pickup, it m makes the RNG so much more, so much better. Because if we run into another uh, blue shell, we just can immediately save it and we're, we're fine. I'm gonna go ahead and That's use it nice. there. Yeah, there's outside expansion. It's a very quick course. It is baby park at home, but it's it can be a lot of fun. <sighs> hey, the course doesn't have to be long to be like awesome. Right. No, that is it's a very, very fun course. Now this is our third main boss fight of the game. Um and again, for those who know Bloodborne, um ah. This is very analogous to the actual Nicolas fight. Uh, this is Nicholas. Um, we have to trap him in an arena in order to actually start fighting him. So we're going to chase him around a little bit. Uh, he will make turns when we push him into a turn um, or in an intersection that has, you know, an, an extra turn. So we want to chase him into that intersection, turn back around, and now we can chase him into the actual arena for the first fight. And my controller's ah. starting to act up here a little bit. All right. And now we just wail on them with whatever weapon we can find. There is a trick here. So Nightmare Cart does still have the visceral system that Bloodborne has. Um, it is a little bit harder to do in Nightmare Cart uh, because it's kind of a hard mechanic to transfer from a, you know, a Souls-like into a cart racer. Um, but we can do viscerals. Um, the easiest way to do them is to hit an AI while they are trying to attack us. Um, Nicholas is still bugged, and I think she's just leaving it uh, as it is, because we've mentioned this bug a few times and she's uh, not fixed it. Nicholas does not attack. So we, oh. in order to try to get a visceral on him, we have to resort to the secondary method, which is uh, forcing him to drift. Uh, the pro uh, so if you uh, hit an enemy with an item with a weapon while they're drifting, uh, that also can trigger a visceral. Uh, the problem is, is Nicholas's cart is the birdcage that's on his head. Um, so he has no cart. He's just running. And that is a cart that you can unlock is the birdcage. Uh, it's actually really fun to use. Uh, it's got pretty good hand. It's got one of the best handlings in the game. Um, it's a little bit heavier, uh, but it's it is a lot of fun to use. Um, but the problem is, is we don't get to actually see if he's drifting or not. Um, so trying to trigger a visceral on that phase right there specifically can be very difficult. The reason being is if we can trigger a visceral there, we can go into the chase sequence here with him on very low health. Uh, we do get a noble pistol later on into this chase sequence, uh, and it makes it so much faster to be able to clear him out uh, and move on. Okay. This, cha this chase sequence can be very ske very sketchy. Um, you obviously have to follow behind as close as you can. You have that meter up at the top. Um, so if you fall into the red, you, you lose him. Uh, he runs away, and you have to restart the entire boss fight. 
That jump so can cheese. also be very scary because it's blind landing. If you're not careful, you will, and you're doing any kind of a spin boost or anything, you will spin boost past the uh, past the teleporter, and, and it takes you right back to the be very beginning of this chase sequence, and you lose everything. Ask me how I know this. <laughs> Oh, I, I can, I hear the horror just in the ask me how I know this. Ah, oh, that's, that's good. All right, so that's a pretty good Nicholas fight. Um, now we get to do my other favorite thing. Mm. This cannot be happening! So remember how I mentioned that um, there was uh, my the other glitch in the uh, clock tower? There was no uh, kill plane? Yeah, yeah uh, there's no kill plane either in this course. So we will infinitely fall into the abyss until uh, all of the uh, all of the text is done and, and um, Nicholas has you know has expositioned himself enough. Um, so it, it is kind of fun to just drive off the cliff and drive off the track and just float and fall while he finishes up his uh, finishes up his speech. Fantastic. Um, we're moving on to uh, as uh, I used to call this Rainbow Road at home. Um, my good friend, my friend Acadial, uh, helped rename this split for me. Um, it is called Painbow Road. Ooh, it is nice. It is the longest course of the game. Um, the AI is also very aggressive, um, and if you fall behind too much later on, it's actually very, very sketchy and very rough. You can also lose a lot of this to the jumps. Um, if you get hit while you're in the middle of a jump, you will fall. Uh, so. So we we want to get the blood droplets here, but we also want to try to get ourselves a little bit further ahead so that we don't have to worry about um, the AI. Uh, there I did another fun little trick. If you have a melee weapon uh, and you time it just right, you can actually time it and land on a boost pad and it will carry the momentum from the melee weapon through to uh, when you land. Uh, and that allows you to get a massive boost and a massive amount of speed. Uh, it was unfortunate I got hit by a blue shell there, but hey, you know, uh, that kind of happens. Yeah. This actually gives us the a better chance of trying to find uh, blood droplets, uh, as well as maybe picking up any uh, stray monsters that uh, the AI doesn't pick up here. And also just kind of, <laughs> we could catch back up here. Yeah, as you see, Nicholas, it's just run. <laughs> I love this. Um, the, the birdcage is one of my favorite cards because he's just running. Uh, my other favorite card is uh, one that I've created kind of a meme category for called Hoggers, uh, where we can uh, run around on the giant boar. The giant boar is the worst card in the game. Lowest handling, highest size, uh, highest weight. Um, but the funniest part about it is, for most of the weapons, uh, the the character will be holding onto that weapon. But for the chain gun, uh, the boar, because uh, because Lilith couldn't find a way for the player to be holding on to it, um, she programmed it so that the boar is actually holding onto the chain gun uh, in between its tusks. Oh my god! So if you fantastic. if you turn the camera around while uh, the while you're holding the, the chain gun while riding the boar, the gun is literally in between the boar's tusks, and it is amazing. Nice. We're actually looking really good here. Uh, we finally got to a point where we're passing, we've, we've passed the scariest part of Painbow Road, which is the clumps of enemies together. Uh, and all the jumps, we have ourselves a transfuser, which um, gives us a lot of safety. Um, even though I'm low health, I can, again, heal and avoid all of that damage. So we're looking really good here. While we finish up this lap, Oscar, how, 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 is, how is everything going for you today? I know you've, <laughs> you've had your hot drink a little bit earlier today. How are you feeling? Yeah, my, my hot drink is uh, going to be on my arm for about a month or so. <laughs> Um, I did like a quick question with the shards because I noticed you picked up the one or the third and final one in the the previous boss fight. So are the locations of those shards like um, the, just 
they are always going to be in the same spot, or do they move and it's kind of random? They're always in the same spot. Um, they're always oh, nice. in those three boss fights, and they're always in the same position. Uh, so that at least, with the routing of this, you don't have to worry about mm. trying to find those those uh, moon shards. Uh, you do have to make nice. sure that you toss away any weapons you have, uh, because you can't pick up the moon shard while you already have a weapon. <gasps> uh, oh no! So it can, if you're carrying a weapon, it can get dicey. But at the same time, mm -hmm. um, like I kind of, like I did in that second boss fight, I just threw the insight. Um, I threw the insight away and then picked up the uh, the moon shard. So it, you don't have to worry about not being able to pick it up because you can always drop your weapon or throw it away or use it uh, and then pick it up. That's fair. Also, I'm getting, I'm seeing a lot of love in chat for, for Hoggers. So. Hoggers is so much fun, but it's also very, very, I, I, I love it and hate it because uh, you're obviously playing on the biggest carts. So your hitbox is bigger. So um, enemies will obviously be able to hit you much more uh, than you would, than they would otherwise, uh, which can make runs very quick and very scary. Uh, we're on to the final okay. um, regular fight of this. It is the any, the essentially last person standing, any person, every person for themselves fight. Um, I've lost numerous PB pace runs to this fight. Uh, oh, jeez. Because if you get blindsided by a shotgun um, or the skeletons uh, hit you with the, the hunter rifle, uh, you just, you lose so much health. Um, and then it gets very, very tricky because there's no health spawns for a few minutes. So, like that, I just lost two thirds of my health uh, off of one hit. So I need to really be careful now. Uh, up until either everybody kind of eliminates themselves or the uh, the weapon, the uh, health spawns. No, no blood goggles, please. That's fine. Um, shotguns are preferable here because you're in such close proximity. Um, you can really do a lot of damage. Um, the Makes pistol sense. is fine in this one as well because you can still deal a lot of damage very quickly. All right, come here. Thank you. Oh, they went down. <laughs> I I hit the the sisters once with the shotgun, and then they decided to chase me down. So that was uh, that can be a, kind of a nice manipulation of the AI. Um, if they if you hit them occasionally, they will just come chase after you, so mm -hmm. uh, you can use that to your advantage here. Uh, we are down to one, and I gotta really be careful for those skeletons. There we go. All right. Nice. We're clear. Um, I will need a little bit of focus time going into the final boss fight. Um, this is gonna be unlike anything you've ever seen in a kart racer. Um, this is one of the wildest beats of kart racing programming I have seen anybody do. Um, I absolutely love this fight and the lead up to it. Uh, but yeah, I will need just a little bit of focus time here. All right. Yeah, give them your energy. There's Miralodio. Um, and yeah, this is where uh, this is where this fight begins. That's one of the worst parts done. Nice. Uh, that's the other part that almost always kills me because you can you can fall uh, by misaiming your dash there. Uh, but yeah, that is the platforming section of Melodia done. Um, essentially, what happens is uh, the the melee weapons your melee weapons have a dash forward. So you have to use a combination of the melee dash and your boost in order to um, 
to traverse those platforms. Uh, we're on the final boss fight, so the time will be coming up soon. Uh, we are going to just continue to spin around, uh, build up the uh, the five damage or the five uh, uh, aether vial form of our sword here, and we're onto the second phase of the arena fight. Uh, Mira Lydia spawns a sniper. We have to get it down to a certain health percentage uh, before Mira Lydia will come back to face off herself. Um, event, yep, there's a scream. She will be coming soon. Uh, let's see here. There should be a health spawning very soon, and that's usually the key of. Yep, there's the the big red circle spawn. That means that Mira Lodi has come. I'm going to pick up that health just for safety. Uh, but yeah, now we can avoid. Now we can just leave the um, the sniper behind as much as uh, the game will allow me. Um, and start targeting Miralodia. We want to just jump and use that slash and try to follow her up into the air. Uh, if we can do that, then we can actually get a lot more damage out on her, but I'm not getting lucky with her spawns and also got a, a lot on the sniper earlier on, so I wasn't able to get as much as I wanted. Uh, time is coming up here oh. on the final hit. Time. GG's. Uh, what was that? That was just under 45 minutes. We'll get the official time in just a second. Let me pull up. I didn't have my splits running uh, for the first time uh, in a showcase. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, just under 45. My PB is a 41.18 and world record is under 40. Um, I got second place on the refuse and uh, first place runner does uh, gets a lot of really good RNG in the fights and also is able was able to do uh, visceral skips on the two main boss fights uh, that you can use them mm. on. So, um, but a forty-five is a very is yeah. a, that's a really respectable, especially for having to restart. Um, yeah, yeah, officially I, forty-four forty-five. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. That was, that was a really good run. Outside of the couple of restarts, it was, that was a really good. And really yeah, that good was run. amazing. Yeah. Again, this game is free, one hundred percent free on Steam on Itchio. Um, Lilith is continuing to update and develop uh, this game. Um, she's released a bunch of uh, patches and hotfixes uh, working with the speedrun community and with uh, the rest of like her community as well, finding bugs and uh, glitches. She's actively working on DLC um, and uh, mm -hmm. there's a, she's got a lot of plans for the DLC coming out too sometime in 2025. Um, she's also actively work, working on online racing, uh, uh, simultaneous like mm -hmm. online racing. So um, you could play this. You could play this local couch co-op with your friends, but you'll will eventually be able to play online, um, which I'm so looking forward to because that's going to be so much fun. Um, she's also working on being able to use uh, different characters in the campaign. Um, there's a wide range of characters that you can use, and Lilith has a. Uh, VTuber model that she uses when she streams, and Lilith is in the game. Um, so you can use her in races uh, as, as you want as well. It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I really suggest uh, picking up this game. It's, it's a blast. It looks a whole lot of fun. Like, and just hearing and hearing people in chat how much they loved it. Yeah, I, I believe you 100%. Yeah. But that all said, where where all can they find you and what are you currently playing? Um, yeah, so you can find me, um, Blue Sky. It's uh, joker.bskysocial or whatever the Blue Sky link is, but it's uh, joker, J-Z-R-K-E-R-R. -R. You can find me here on Twitch, uh, just joker. Um, I'm still working on, uh, I'm still going to be playing through Nightmare Cart a little bit um, as I've got a few other showcases coming up uh, in the next couple of months. Um, one that I can't, fully announced yet, but is going to be very, very, very fun. Um, otherwise, I will probably I've got a few other games that I'm going to start picking up for uh, potential speedruns. Um, I might jump back to like my old uh, Sonic R and Sinistheat runs as well. Um, and yeah, I want to give uh, a big shout out to uh, the, uh, the Clock Tower community. Um, and uh, their big horror speedrunning community. Um, big shout outs to them. The uh, indie game, uh, indie horror game speedrun community as well. Uh, they've got their, uh, the Discord is linked in the, uh, the speedrun.com page for Nightmare Cart. 
Um, very friendly, uh, very open chat. They they love working uh, all together and they do a lot of community stuff. Also, big shout outs to Binary Breakers. Um, uh, I just happen to be one of the admins of uh, Binary Breakers, but uh, if you um, are breaking the gender binary in any way, shape or form, please uh, shoot us a DM um, on uh, any of our social media. Uh, we would love to have you in if you uh, find yourself, um, you know, any any way or shape or form of breaking the gender binary, we'd love to have you. Um, but yeah, that's, I think that's really about it for me. Um, go play Nightmare Cart. It's free, it's fun, It's it handles fantastically. It was developed mainly by one person. So uh, go go play the game, go give, go give her your love. It's fantastic, do it. Agreed, this is the Joker, play Nightmare Cart and give them a round of applause and GG's one more time in chat. Uh, but in the meantime, we will be taking another hydration break. So get up, hydrate, and we will be back. Hello again, friends, and welcome back to Express Lane. I hope you all had a nice hydration break, but um, I do have a quick job for you. You're going to want to go and type exclamation point discord in the chat right now. Because if you do that, you get to join our official GDQ Discord and you can add the hotfix and join your role. Get that role, you can keep tabs on all the upcoming events. You can talk with staff and fellow showrunners like myself and more. But again, you have to type exclamation point Discord in Twitch chat for more info because it's super important you do need to do that. Why you do that, we're going to be heading on to our next fantastic run which is going to be castlevania symphony of the night with abby's corner so abby take it away hi everybody um so this isn't your regular castlevania symphony of the night this is castlevania symphony of the night on the sega saturn the best version everybody should play the sega saturn version boo playstation boo um hey. <laughs> And with me, I have uh, Jupiter Climb, who is totally on my side on this one. Hello. Yes, hello, everybody. I am here to support Saturn Soden. Yes. So the Saturn Soden version uh, is only available in Japan, because of course it is. Um, and it has glitches that we don't have in the ps1 version or the ps4 version or the psp version um so there's a lot of exclusive stuff that you're gonna see here um but without any further ado in three two one let us begin the run good luck good luck now you may have noticed that this is called alucard any percent but i just picked maria and that's because we're going to trick the game into thinking we're one character while being another but in order to do that we need to first make it to a save room so while maria is riding the horse into the castle um we're going to prepare to do uh dash kicks dash kicks guarantee that we kill the works for whatever reason regular kicks leave them with like one hp it's kind of ridiculous and also provided ghouls don't hit us it also guarantees that if a ghoul is rising the ghoul will die as well however as we saw there ghouls are like no i'm gonna ignore the rules sometimes and it's just like oh okay so here we go again dash kicking through gotta be careful because again if you're too close uh she'll do a kick instead and then we are going to gravity jump up maria has a okay there we go has a diff okay game i see how this is this is what happens when you use an eight-way gate on your controller sometimes it's just like no to gravity jumps really there we go all right Maria also has access to a triple jump, while Alucard only gets access to a double jump from the Leap Stone. So right now, what I'm going to be doing is resetting the game. Every Sega Saturn game can do this. By pressing ABC Start, you start the game. Don't press it too much, otherwise you will go back into the disk menu. Uh, system. Then we are going to load the save I just made, but also pressing ABC Start again. If done correctly, you won't see the loading screen, and then we can proceed with tricking the game into thinking we're still Maria while being Alucard. What we've done is every item Maria has, all her stats, as well as all her relics, 
are unlocked. She happens to have every relic in the game, the Dragon Helm, as well as uh, 200 MP and 200 HP. You cannot see that she has any of this because um, Maria and Richter play like a classic Vania character, so we don't get to see their stats ever. As a matter of fact, Maria can't even go see the... Um, the librarian. You can go see the librarian, but he won't turn around. He'll just sit there. So now oh. we're going to backdash because that is still our fastest form of movement on the ground. We have access to the Godspeed boots. However, as Alucard really wants to bash his head into the wall, fine, I'll do this the slow way. It's fine. Oh, wow. Okay, no, this skeleton just said no. Um,. We have access to the Godspeed boots in this version. It is exclusive to the Saturn version. The Saturn version also has three exclusive areas um, that were never added, and apparently Iga hates the Saturn version. Um, it's really weird why. Um, Iga, of course, was the director of this game, as well as the director of most of the Metroidvania Castlevanias. Um, as we continue to go here. Come on. There we go. And then I'm using, um, the bat transformation to cancel, um, gravity jumps heights because they go quite high and too high for what I need them to. We are then going to grab this. Very important that we keep the holy water because it's going to be very useful for the first two bosses we fight. Um as we continue here. Um, so, oh, so I'm going to I'm gonna do a very, very scientific pun, and I'm pretty sure chat's going to hate me for this. Those, okay. uh, with, with Maria and how she was having some issues getting that, that gravity jump to land. I think I figured out that the reason she couldn't get her jump high enough, given it was a gravity jump, is because Jupiter is here. I'm going to let that sink in for the scientists so they can cringe at me. Okay and not explain it right away. <laughs> so here's where gravity, or not gravity jumps, um, Godspeed boots <laughs> jumps come in. Because for whatever reason, despite the fact that it's slower to run with them than it is to backdash, um, it makes regular jumps go faster. Um, which is interesting. Um, because even without a shield, backdashing is still faster as we go up here. I'm, of course, doing some older strats because um, math is difficult and trying to get a uh, Masamune to drop is very much a pain. Um, Jupiter, as well as other runners, have been able to figure out how to make it drop almost 100% of the time. But if you don't do the certain math that's required, um, it's a 1 in 33 chance of it dropping in total. Or is it a 1 in 7? Because there's 7... Uh, it's like a 1 in 33 chance, but because we have, like, 7 Black Panthers we can pass, um, it increases our odds, but it's still very hard to get. I've only gotten it once. Only once. And, so and here I'll, we go. I'll fill you in on the, uh, the gravity joke, because... Jupiter's gravity is 2.4 times stronger than Earth's gravity, so it would be harder to jump higher <laughs> with Jupiter's gravity affecting it. <laughs> I kind of got the joke, but I was like, okay. <laughs> All right. So we passed the first boss. That's why the holy water is needed in order to take care of the hippogriff. Uh, some runners will use tetras, but I'm too worried about my mana, so I just kind of let things happen because mana is going to be very important in the back half as we're almost entering Castle 2. Um, also, does anyone want to see the moon by chance? And I don't mean right now, because obviously we see the moon... Thanks, Alucard. Thanks. Because <laughs> obviously we see the moon now, but I mean the moon after I glitch here. Because so we're going Always. to perform the first, or the first glitch as Alucard. So what I'm doing is I'm backdashing but holding forward the entire time, and if I was in the right place... Oh, no, we got the bad one. Okay, well that is, you know, a glitch. 
uh, but I need to run back over here because um, he won't move into other areas until you go back into that screen. So if I do it correctly, by holding forward, we get that. Now, if you want to see the moon, you just need to move forward a bit. I am going to enter bat just to be a little bit on the safe side. You can do it in human form, but there's the risk of falling. So there we go. And then we're going to backdash all the way over here. And then I'm going to run, jump. And if I did that correctly, we teleport into the next castle. Um, we are here super, super early. Everything is going to hit like a truck. Um, so we need to be careful. Um, but wing smashing still kills everything in one shot, and also we're invincible. Speaking of wing smashing, vertical wing smashing. Uh, we don't really Ooh. get that. Uh, that is specifically a glitch thing. Um, and that's pretty much the only screen you can do it in. Um, so here we go. Gravity jump. The pumpkins will do 45 damage. And then here are the panthers that I mentioned that can drop a Masamune. It's a 1 in 33 chance or some ridiculous math number like that. But there is a way to save Manip to get it to drop more consistently. I am bad at math and don't know how to do it. Not a bad fight here as we continue. There we go. And then we're going to continue to uh, move on. Again, you don't want to wing smash out of the boss screens because Alucard will turn back into a human and therefore um, basically negating the benefit and basically just costing us too much mana. And here we go again. Of course, every time we level up, we are increasing our mana as well as our HP. Um, so there is a benefit there. However, we're going to now grab a Mana Prism, which is a full uh, heal for mana, um, as we're going to need that mana in order to continue. Um, and then we're going to get up here. And then remember the hold forward while backdashing trick? We're going to do it here again. And hopefully not get hit by the goth. There we go. So, it is done. Oh. I am now going to equip my potions. The Saturn version also includes three hands. Um, the third hand cannot be used for attacks. It can only be used um, for using items, so that is why we put the Strength Potion there. I'm going to activate the Mana Prism so I have full mana, and it's going to take about eight gravity jumps to make it through. However, if you screw up and fall all the way down, it's not an endless pit and is recoverable. You would just need to transform into the bat or mist and then transform back into a human to recover. Uh, but would still take about, oh, I think it's 11 if you hit all the way to the bottom, I think. Oh, wow. So here, yeah. So here we go. Oop. It's kind of bad luck. Oh, oh. dear. Oops. And oh boy. Okay, this is going to get real interesting real fast. Um, prepare to see a very long final boss fight. Um, oh, no. Because I just used the mana potion, or not the mana potion, the strength potion now. So we're in trouble. Don't worry about my HP. We're going to be fine. There's one more health pickup we can pick up. And it's right here. Always have safety. And then we're going to fall to the bottom. There we go. Now again, the strength potion is mainly used for Dracula because Dracula um, has a lot of HP. So you either want the Muramasa or is, is it the Muramasa or is it the Masamune? It's the Masamune, right? Hmm. Oh. Jupiter, do you know the answer? <laughs> Of which sword Sorry, it is. Could you uh, repeat the question for me? Um, is it the Muramasa or the Masamune that drops from the Panthers? All right. So in this game, the best katana is the Masamune. That's the one that drops. It's got okay. a really nice special, the multi-hit special. Yeah. And that makes quick work of Shaft and Dracula. Uh, again, it is quite the drop unless you can do the save manipulation. Um, so it's very hard to get. 
So we use the strength potion to basically, instead of do 30 damage, we do f around high 40s to low 50s, uh, which makes quick work here. And then we're going to go find a dead pixel. So here we go. Is this the dead pixel? There we go. And then we're going to wing smash. We're going to wait until we pass the second gold knight. There we go. And just in case, make a quick little safety save here. Again, because we never went into that save room, that's why we got the polygon um, coffin. Um, also, when you go into a save room, it unbreaks the game because the game will continue to be broken until I, either you hard reset the game or go into a save room again, which is kind of wild um, that the game would continue to be broken. We are now also going to get a try to get a swag strat. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to transform gravity jump up and then transform into the bat and try to untransform as I hit the hole. Unfortunately, no swag. So, for the shaft fight, we are going... Thank you, phone. Um, we are going to be tetra-spiriting uh, to do damage to him. Interesting that that only did 19 damage. That should have been way more, but okay. Whoops, wrong transformation. Please don't hit me. Thank you. Ooh, we might be able to get some punches in here as tetra is kind of... Ooh! That is quite a bit of damage. I usually don't see that kind of damage against shafts, so that's very interesting. Um, again, using the mist to avoid his damage. And that should be... Yep, there we go. And of course, because nice. I'm still transformed in uh, mist, we'll be losing mana until the screen goes dark. Um as you could see there, but now we will be replenishing mana as Dracula comes in, um, even through the cutscene dialogue, as you can see it slowly rising there. We don't really use a lot of magic here. Um, we're going to Tetra him as he comes down, uh, which is going to help a bit. Um, also, for any Dragon Ball Z fans, uh, the voice of Dracula is the Japanese voice actor for Cell, um, for those who oh. didn't know. Nice. I use Dragon Ball because I figured Dragon Ball would be well more well known than Street Fighter because he also voices M. Bison until Street Fighter VI. Oh, that's like that. I'm actually curious now which one would be more well known because I it's a little bit of a toss up. Whoops. Apparently, I don't like pressing the mist button today. <laughs> All right, I'm one more hit away from death. There we go. Okay, that's what I thought. That's why I made the safety save, just in case. Because I kind of figured that that might happen. Oh, by the way, Maria voices over the death screen in English. In English, it's just some random voice that says game over. So something you also don't often see. So we'll reload that one. That might also explain why we'd be doing so much damage. I'm level 26. Usually you're around 22 to 24 mm -hmm. um, at this point. Um, so lucky us as we continue <laughs> here. All right, here we go. But 33 damage isn't exactly the worst. Um, usually you see about 29 to 22 or not 22, to 32 uh, without the strength potion. Um, I realize that like 32 or 33 is not that much higher. There's the swag, by the way, but it's kind of nice. like it might be better uh, and might finish Dracula a little quicker than I estimate. So here we go. Here we go. Now, whether we'll be able to hit Shaft with punches is a completely... Ooh! Ow. Okay, that was my bad. Oh, and he's in the air, so we'll just hit him with more Tetras here. Uh, 
All right. Come on. Again, hitting a uh, shaft with punches isn't necessarily necessary. It just makes the fight go a little faster. But he is finished. I forget how much damage you can possibly hit him with one Tetra, because I think it's six times that the Tetras will hit him before they disappear. But each one of the four also does 13 damage each hit. Um, so I'm not 100% sure how much damage he takes. Um during that and of course here we go with dracula once again just have to be a little bit more careful i might also try to hit him with um with uh holy water because holy water will hit him for 11 damage a shot you can kind of tell which hand he's going to hit you because there is a little bit of an animation but obviously if you're not playing or playing paying close enough attention it can be kind of like which hand's going to hit me so there we gotcha. go also this attack right here does about 125 damage if it hits you so you want to be careful with that there we go unfortunately poison mist doesn't hurt him which is kind of understandable because we're also invincible while we're in mist form. There we go. All right. And then fade. Basically, he'll do the same thing each time. Um, there's no difference between finishing him in phase one to phase two. Ooh, he's a little bit higher up, though. Interesting. Oh, there we go. Time. Oh, go geez. back. Go back whence you came. Trouble the soul of my mother no more. Why or how? How is it that I've been so defeated? You've been doomed ever since you lost the ability to love. Ah, for what profit is it to a man if he gains the world but loses his own soul? Matthew 1626, I believe. Tell me, what were Lisa's last words? She said, do not hate humans. If you cannot live with them, then at least do them no harm. Lisa, forgive me. Farewell, my son. Choo, 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 choo. Um, so yeah, this was Castlevania Symphony of the Night on the Sega Saturn. Uh, it is the fastest category that you can do in the entire franchise, even faster than I forget the category that was the previous fastest one. Um, but yeah, uh, this category got cracked open about a year ago. Um, Jupiter was one of the people who actually helped crack it right open. Speaking of which, you should follow Jupiter Climb. Jupiter, would you like to tell the people where they can find you? No, 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 no. This is all about you. Nice sub 20. Really good run. Go follow Abby instead. I think that'd be a better use of your time. Okay, fine. Alter alternatively, fo follow both of them. Just saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So you can follow me at twitch.tv slash abby's corner um i also have a speedrun group uh for people under the trans umbrella where all people are welcomed we're actually hosting our first event uh coming later this month on the 20th uh if you would like to join the discord uh feel free to dm me or to dm the twitter or blue sky accounts um, again, anybody under the trans umbrella is welcomed. And uh, on the 20th, from 7 p.m. to 12 a.m., we will be hosting our first event at uh, twitch.tv slash trans speedrun collective on Twitch. So, yeah, uh, thank you for having me. You're going to hear my voice still, though, because uh, coming up next is uh, Silent Hill 2 by death troops and i will be on the commentaries uh but thank you once again e, this is true everybody one more time give some fantastic ggs for abby's for absolutely amazing run
Hello, hello, hello! Once more, friends, welcome back to the final run of today's episode of Express Lane! But of course I have more things to say. So, just FYI, if you missed out on any of our shows or events, all you have to do is head out to, or head over to youtube.com slash games done quick and check out the VODs. If you are watching from YouTube, hi! You should totally head to twitch.tv slash games done quick and watch episodes of Hotfix Live! We have content all week and we have some super cool shows and super cool runners. Like our last runner, Abby, who's now on comms for our final runner of the night, which is Death Tropes. And he's going to be running some Ascent Hill 2 Enhanced Edition. So, Death Tropes, welcome back and take it away. Thank you, Oscar. I appreciate it. Uh, and e hello, Abby. Thanks for doing comms for me again. Hope you're doing well. Uh, but yeah, this is Silent Hill 2, the Enhanced Edition. Um, it might look a little bit different if you've played the original before all the graphics are enhanced, uh, so to speak. Um, it runs in 60 frames per second. And it looks very, very beautiful. So if you haven't played the original and you would like to, this is probably the best way to play it, unless you have the PS2 version. Anyways, though, let's get the run started in three, two, one, go. Good luck. Thank you. I also know a lot of people who have played the remake for the first time, and it's their first uh, actual time seeing Silent Hill 2 in general. So you're going to see this game go by a little bit faster than that game did. Now, first of the tech we just did is we grab some text there on the car because uh, there's a map that it makes you grab at the beginning. We don't want to grab that map, though, for a multitude of reasons. So we just skip that. And now we're just running on through the forest. Again, if you've played the remake, this will all look real familiar to you, but it's going to it's going to kind of zip on by. We also noted that um, the Enhanced Edition speedrun mode set seed, which is what we're doing here, uh, for whatever reason, all the graphical enhancements are turned on and you have to manually turn them off each run. It's really weird Ooh. that they would have everything on versus everything off. Um, but that is a thing. Um, also... The reason for test build 3.3 is because um, the game's kind of finicky on PC. Uh, it's just still a thing, and sometimes things want to break, even with the Enhanced Edition. Yeah, so so essentially, uh, I'll, you'll be running this um, in, in the latest version, and I've had it just for speedrunning purposes. Casually, it's, it doesn't have any type of issues that I've seen personally. But uh, this is the last stable version of, of the game I have for speedrunning, uh, which is why that text is there. So unfortunately, that's that's just kind of how that is. But the game still works wonderfully. It's just like it's it's the most stable and, and the safest way to run it in this particular moment. But uh, again, uh, you might also notice the game saved at the bottom of my screen every few seconds. That is because whenever we quick save, James Stamina will actually come, go back to 100%. If you let that go, if I don't hit quick save, then the game will start running a lot slower, so it keeps us going as fast as humanly possible the entire time. <laughs> it's the, uh, legitimately one of my favorite parts about Silent Hill speedruns is seeing just how many times you've saved your game There's, at the end of a game. Yeah, <laughs> and especially in this one, it's like you've saved your game 10,000 times. Like, why? That's why. Well, Here's our, our second uh, method of, of using text. Text storage, what it's called. So essentially, we're going to be holding this. There's no reason to go back. I'm going to look for Mary, which is the whole reason why we're here is to find Mary. We're going to keep that text on the screen for just a few minutes here because it's actually going to let us skip over a cutscene, which forces you to go to a different part of Silent Hill to grab the plank. We're not doing that. We don't need the plank. And it should be noted that you need to hit quick save pretty consistently to keep the text on the storage or er, on the screen. If you let go of quick save for too long, the text will disappear and the game kind of freaks out depending mm -hmm. how close you are to that cutscene trigger or any cutscene triggers that mm -hmm. we skip. Because mm -hmm. another thing that's going to happen here is everything we're about to skip is going to still be active later mm -hmm. on in the run. Exactly. I want to also make note, Abby, you may have noticed, um, I did not pick up the chainsaw. So we're going to have to make a tiny little altercation to how this run usually goes. Not a huge deal, but it is going to differ for one, one small part of the run. Because usually you grab the chainsaw and you use that as your melee weapon. You fight the first boss with it and you, um, 
you break a wall down with it later. But we're not doing that because I didn't grab the chainsaw. Oh. Also, it should be noted that if you keep the text on the screen, car models won't load in fully. Their hitboxes will be there. But what you're running into won't, like, you won't know that it's a car. Oh. Also, I guess I did grab the chainsaw. I didn't remember grabbing it, so never mind. <laughs> Honestly, I was, I was, like, I was, I, I was I, talking. I was going to say, I was, talking, I was, like, I was you, talking, and then all did. of a sudden, I don't remember grabbing it. Just going to be honest with you guys, don't remember it, but we got it. So all the stuff I just said about uh, differences in, in the route, never mind, I lied. I was just so, like, autopiloting and, and chatting that I just forgot I grabbed it. But Would, would you good. say the game saved you in terms yes. of uh, yes, I did. the chainsaw? And it tells me because it's at the bottom left of the screen. <laughs> Don't you love that in runs where you're like, I'm pretty sure I forgot to do something. Oh yes, no, I actually and then I did, did it. okay. Or it's like All I right. thought or it's I thought to I, I I thought I did something and then I get to a part later and I'm less like, guess what? I didn't do that thing. I do that every time I'm rerouting something. Mm -hmm. I will change my split to purposely like show the new update. And I'm like, it's just like get to that part I'm going, oh, I wonder if I change the the splits, and then I realize after fact I did it. <laughs> change the splits. It's like, oh. Well, there goes yeah, an there hour and a half of my life. All so, right. <laughs> so now we are in the apartments, which is the first, I would say, dungeon of the game. And we're going to go get our flashlight here. This is where you start seeing a lot more enemies, a lot more, a lot, a lot of manipulations we're going to be doing here. Oh, don't grab the, don't grab it. It's fine. Or apparently just, activating your <laughs> chainsaw. Apparently, which is not usually supposed to happen because you don't usually have it equipped here, but it's okay. Um, it should be noted that we're not hitting game save anymore because when you're inside, James runs at his slowest speed outside. He does not gain two speeds mm -hmm. inside. He only has the one. In hard mode, though, you actually do want to keep hitting game saved. I actually learned that from uh, from Niddle. <laughs> oh. Now and you have to pick up the pistol, pistol, by the way. The game will not continue yep. until you have the pistol. Yes, yeah, so the, the game has certain triggers. And, and if you want to progress through the apartments, you have to grab it. We tried to grab a key, but uh, a little girl stepped on our hand, told us no. And then uh, now I have to go down here instead. Here's some little manipulation. She also kicks too. the key away. She does. So we're doing a little, a little soft lock here. So essentially, we can't go through this door because we quick saved to skip a little bit of stuff here. We can't go through this door, but we're going to just squat, and then the game is no longer soft lock. <laughs> essentially... <laughs> yeah, that's that's essentially what it is. Yeah, then then you're not soft locked anymore. <laughs> it should be noted that you can also aim your gun yep. to you can unsoft aim, lock. Yes. But you have to make sure that you're not moving because mm -hmm. if you're moving, the game won't unsoft lock you. So you have to make sure that you're perfectly still. Also correct. Ooh, no, you want to grab that. James is just disagreeing. He's with you. just like not it being nice tonight. He's, he's being James. He's upset that I've been running the remake. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, but you have sound to it at home. It's me. <laughs> so uh, basically, in in uh, in runs that are not set seed, you would come up here, use the key, see what your time is, and then that's how you would figure out what your clock RNG is. But on set seed, we already know what we're doing here. Right at that time, and we're done here. Because everything it is should be noted free. also if you're on um, the other speedrun mode, uh, it doesn't matter because you have to go find all the puzzle solutions mm -hmm. and or brute force it um, because they took out uh, the ability to know what scene you're on. Yep. <laughs> now it's Pyramid Head. I'm sure you all know who he is at this point. I don't think the man needs any in introduction. Also, a difference between Enhanced Edition and OG PC Edition slash PS2 and Xbox is that it puts you outside of the closet, so you're not facing the key right away, so you have mm -hmm. to try to get back into the closet. Uh, whereas Enhanced Edition is like, no, we're putting you right in front of the key, so and you so can now pick you know it up. exactly what you're doing. Because in the OG, like, you, you, don't, you can't really see what's in there. You can't, and, and, and you will probably leave the room if it's your first time playing, not know you need to grab it and then run around the apartments forever. And we just grab sense. some juice. Cause some why, blood why would, apple. Yeah. 
I mean, you gotta stay hydrated. No, exactly. Like you gotta just. I, I just want to see James just like cracking these open and drinking them on the run. <laughs> Except for no, he puts them in the trash. Yeah, he just throws them away, as you'll see here in just a second. What? Also, it should be noted, as we were running between the two buildings, we do have full running speed. Uh, that is the only spot outside when we're doing the apartment section that we have it, because we're eventually going to go back outside, but we won't have the speed boost mm -hmm. um, during that part coming up right now. Yeah, this technically still is being inside, even though you are outside. Real weird. Just love the random stroller in the pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why not? Yeah. It's and it's and it's in, it's in there in the remake too, and it makes just as much sense, which is none. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love um, that. Also, fun fact about this, you may be noticing that we're going to see Eddie, but we don't get anything for it, and that's because if you don't see Eddie, Angela doesn't spawn in, so we can't get the third coin. Mm-hmm. So yeah, a lot of this area, a lot of the game itself is based off hitting certain triggers. Like if I didn't grab the the, the handgun, a lot of stuff doesn't happen. And I'm going back out here because this is where our second coin is. It should be noted that you can grab the old man coin or the snake coin uh, first or second, mm -hmm. depending on your preference. Um, usually, though, the camera points towards the courtyard, so mm -hmm. that's why we typically go in that direction. But sometimes the camera can be pretty tricky, and we'll be like, nah, you're going this way today. Right. Yeah, now we're done with our first area, which is Woodside Apartments. Now we're going into the next door area, which is the Kick Side or Blue Kick Apartments, excuse me. Well, this looks like a well kept building. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. Hmm. Yes. It looks like my house. And oftentimes, an important uh, or a way to help yourself figure out which way to go is to run away from noises. That seems yep. to be very much a thing with the franchise in general, is to <laughs> run away from the noise. And we just got our third coin, so now we're going to go to this puzzle, which is the coin puzzle. If you've, seen, if you've played the remake, you will notice that this looks very similar, but it's not as, as long. It's pretty short, comparatively. But it's still not also, this is the only non-RNG puzzle. Um, it will always be the same depending on your difficulty mm -hmm. that you've selected. So this is the normal difficulty um, preset mm -hmm. for that puzzle. Oh, so like oh. the 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 solution is completely different then if you did this on a different yes different yeah. difficulty. Oh, sir. Um. He's like, I don't want that letter going. I don't, I don't want the key. It's fine. <laughs> you need, One you need thing that to also the game, James. <laughs> about set seed is that you will always get whispers, whereas that's random. Although with um, remake, you also always get whispers. Now, do not go near Pyramid Head. If you go near Pyramid Head, he will turn around and hit you. <laughs> that was the first boss fight. It's <laughs> over. Yeah, he's just kind of. What? what? Yeah. I like he, he just go up. Yep. He no cells yep. getting chainsawed in the stomach. Yep. He's like, nah, fam, I'm out. He's like, I'm, I'm good, dude. I'm out of here. Like, we're good. We're chilling. We're good. But yeah, that's that's another reason. I hope I grab the chainsaw. If you don't, you what? shoot him six times, I believe, and, and he does the same thing. But I think it's seven it's six to or seven. eight. It's been a while. Um, I have not shot him with a pistol in ages at this point. To be honest. Sometimes it's nine because sometimes the hit's not going to count. Right. Uh, but you definitely want to make sure that you don't waste any bullets on any enemies. And now we're back outside and we're getting that full speed. Full running speed. Hey. Yeah, that, that was the first major area. That was the apartments. Now we're <laughs> on our way to find a familiar face. Not not her. She's the girl that stepped in her hand and we're not going to, we're not, we're not talking to her. Yeah, no. Making our way to the park now, to Rosewater Park. Now I can check. Can we get some quick Silent Hill lore? Bog is bad. <laughs> you know what? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> you know what? That's all I need. Close the book. Let's wrap it up. Also, the dog did everything. <laughs> That's actually canon, though. I know. That's the best part. <laughs> that actually is canon. <laughs> So now we have a little friend with us. That's Maria. 
And we will not see her running by no. us at all <laughs> no. because of the speed boost. Um, yeah. Normally in, say, PS2, uh, she would slow it like you would slow down and she'd be like right behind you. But now we're just like a million miles away. And it's like, huzzah. Yeah, she'll catch up and to you, but no, we're, we just want to go. <laughs> Our next stop is the bowling alley. And Maria hates bowling. And and I don't understand how somebody can say that. Because apparently she doesn't like movies either. If you've, if you've played the remake, I know I will bring up the remake multiple times because it just came out. Um, but uh, yeah, in, in the remake, she actually mentions how she hates, she doesn't like movies. It's like, well, what do you enjoy? Do you like anything? I hate bowling. What do you like? Also, how can you sit there and eat pizza? This town is full of monsters. <laughs> I'm wondering if we have a quick minute to hear that line. Go for it. Okay, all right. It's It does not take long. Um, you're James. We met in the apartment building. It's just too iconic to miss. I remember, but... Uh... <laughs> Are you alone here, Eddie? Um, no. Bye bye. Wait, come back. Eddie, let's go after her. Huh? Laura? But why? Laura, is that her name? That's what she said. This town is full of monsters. How can you sit there and eat pizza? She said she was <laughs> fine by herself. She said a fatso like me would just slow her down. Forget you. Forget you. Oh, man. <laughs> I love the first time I played this. I got to this cutscene and I was like, I have more questions about this cutscene than the rest of the game combined. So funny enough, there's actually a video that that we found um, and it goes into like all of the details about Eddie's pizza. And it goes like, oh, no. is it real? Where'd Eddie get it? How far did it have to travel to get to him? Like it's it's a lot, but it's really funny. I need to, I need to watch. It's funny. I would check it out. <laughs> Chad, he said the line. <laughs> <laughs> he said the thing. <laughs> now we're in, uh, I know I don't even have to finish the run anymore. We're, we're solid, I think. I think, I think that's, a, that's a good run. <laughs> oh, GG's. I think, I think that's time. No, that's not. <laughs> so yeah, now we still got Marie with us. We're about to step into the hospital, though. Fun fact, the hospital's layout is the exact same in Silent Hill 2 and Silent Hill 3, but you're going into different rooms. Exactly. Um... And also taking uh, elevators a little earlier. So on some item pickups, you can actually hit your quick save, and it'll skip the skip the message, and you'll just pick up the item. Which is what we just did there. I kind of forget about explaining that because you just do it so fast. Just kind of go around. You can also some... get soft locked at certain That's points. That's true. By doing yeah, that. you want to be very careful. Um, if you if you're hitting quick save uh, on on certain objects, the game will soft lock. You won't be able to do anything, and it'll say a random thing on the bottom of the screen, like it'll say motor home, or like or 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 what's another one? There's there's tons of different ones, but it will literally soft lock. Parking lot. Parking lot is um, one. Yep. Um, elevator. It'll say elevator. That's right. So now we're gonna lose Maria. And we're going to grab this key, and we're going to leave. Yeah, we'll go up to the roof and easy, say hello easy. to an old friend. More pizza? More pizza. Mm. If this is if this looks like the pizza you're getting, I have questions. Again, I have questions. That is, that is not <laughs> that is, no that shepherd that not, fence. That is not my pizza. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we did that. We're going to go to this room over here. And we know the solution to this puzzle already because we're on set seat. Use these keys real quick. And 
then we're gonna grab nothing. Actually, a piece of hey. string, but it's essentially nothing. It's actually a piece of hair, and I have a, <laughs> yeah. I have a conspiracy yeah. theory about this piece of hair. Go ahead. It is a it is a piece of Alyssa's hair. And that's why you can use it Ooh. to pick up the key because it's supernatural and Interesting. has extra strength. Okay. We have to our second boss fight now. This is Flesh Lips. That is the real name. And you cannot hit it with the chainsaw. No, you cannot. That's rude of it. That's rude. <laughs> Kind of, kind of wait the here question for a is, are we going to get bad RNG at the end? Nope. No. That's good. Sometimes that so third one... Oh, Abby, go ahead, please. Uh, the third one will go all the way across the screen, and it'll be like, oh, awesome. But also, sometimes the second one can also move a bit, delaying the third one from moving. Very true. And despite the fact that we don't need that battery, we will never we need have that to battery. Pick up the battery. We have to pick up the battery. We will never, we will never use it. I'm just going but to various floors to of the ho of the almost said hotel of the hospital. We're gonna go find an old friend who we haven't seen in about two minutes. I would say. <laughs> yeah. Hey, in, sp in speedrunning terms, that's oh, that's a long it time. Takes, it takes forever. <laughs> Also, everybody in chat, including Asuka, I want you to pay very close attention to the clock in the corner. Okay? Pay attention to the clock in the okay. corner. And maybe pay attention to the clock on the GDQ screen. Um, coming up here in about, oh, two minutes. You have piqued my curiosity. Uh, you've piqued mine as well. Also, this is the only elevator ride that you can skip naturally. Um, mm -hmm. The other ones require a special trick uh, because the IGT does not pause on elevators and elevators are unskippable uh, unless you do a very uh, complex trick that requires mouse and keyboard. Boo. Um, I'm going back to, excuse me, I'm going back to mouse and keyboard for every elevator. <laughs> Why are you yelling at me? Oh, I actually didn't do it for this one. Apologies. Oh, yeah, you lied. Better, I guess, yeah. Rip, rip. <laughs> so we're done with the hospital yes. now. Well, just about. So when Tropes leaves the hospital, I want everybody to look at the time that it took. And I want you to realize that in the remake, you're not even starting the hospital You're not yet. E yeah. Oh, jeez. You're not even starting it in the run. Is it just they, they added that much more content? There's or is just, just so, yes. much there's more. so much more. Yeah. You're there's, not even done the pyramid head fight yeah, in 21. Yeah, you're not even at that point. What? Yeah, you're not even yeah. at, in the run, you're not even at that point. Now we have to... You have to look at this map. This is forced, unfortunately. You can move James around if you hit quick save and you can that is hear true. him walking, but you can't do anything. No. Look, they made all these assets. They gotta force them somehow. Right, exactly. <laughs> now we're done with the, the, the hospital. And again, we are in, in the speed run for the remake. You are not even at the Jeez. first boss fight. <laughs> Cause when I was, was de-rusting this after speedrunning the remake, I was just like... Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did, okay, so it, does it does it feel like you're like get, or you're missing things yeah. now that you're you've yeah, gotten oh yeah. used to the remake? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, of course. The the oh. remake though, they just added so much content. So much content. Yeah. Like uh the the coin puzzle is three times as long because you have to solve three different combinations. As a matter of fact, if you're doing hard puzzle difficulty, the f mm -hmm. the third uh pattern is the pattern we use here. Uh funny enough. Mm -hmm. Um oh. in the remake. Um and yeah, like I think you're getting into um, other world apartments by the time, like, 
we're like you, the amount of time it's taken us to get here, you're getting into other world apartments in the wow. remake. It's it's a, yeah. it's a long run. It's about a for like an optimal time, it's about a 2 hour run. Oh jeez. Yeah. Yeah, basically you can run Silent Hill to like three times in the time that it takes you to run Silent Hill 2 remake. I actually wanted to do a a test I wanted to do a stream where I speed on the remake, but I also speed run this one at the same exact time. And I see how many times I can finish this one and the amount of time it takes me to finish one run on the remake. Oh my gosh. What, is it? what was that uh, that home pour was that home somebody pour. did? Yep, Schmumler did yeah, home, home pour. <laughs> yep. Or you can beat uh, Silent Hill Homecoming during the cutscenes it's, for downpour. It's so, so funny. Far. It is I so funny. I love that. Also, pay attention that it says it's too dark to read the map. You know, that map we don't have. Um, so again, right. everything we skipped in the beginning with the plank is still active. Um, also, by the way, skipping the plank saves about four minutes. Which is oh, a geez. lifetime and a run. Especially one that's this short. Um, yeah, we're doing this because those cutscenes, uh, those still exist. And so if we don't have tech storage we will have to we will have to watch the cutscene and we'll have to if, i'm pretty sure it forces you to go get the the plank yeah it does i've actually never never done it i've never let go of my text here so i don't know the the consequences to be honest mm -hmm. so i was too scared to test it out <laughs> <laughs> also um because we are holding text Things are unloaded. That's why these streets are empty. Usually there's a bunch of enemies around that are like following you and chasing you, yada, yada, yada. Those just don't exist. But once I let go of this, you can hear them walking around. You can hear that they spawned in. This door also we have to go through will not spawn if you're still holding text. I learned that the hard no. way <laughs> during a run. And also the cars on the mm -hmm. parked on the street won't. Uh, they won't appear, spawn. but you could run into. Yeah, you them can run into them. Just, they just you just see like the silhouette. You see like the the shadow basically. But you'll run into That's that. That's cool. Thing. And now any Silent Hill three enjoyers would know this particular parking lot well. As we head back into Rosewater Park to go get the historical society key. Exactly. And people that have played the remake and finished it recently are probably seeing all of this going, Oh, I know that place. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, wow, it does not take any time to get to these places. <laughs> they also split Rosewater in two in the remake mm -hmm. as well. Huh. Which was an interesting choice. I thought it was kind of cool, though. I enjoyed it. But the run is just so, so long. I do like that they, they made the the game difficulty and the puzzle difficulty, like, separate mm -hmm. in terms of what you could set it to. It took me a second when I started seeing how the categories are break down. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait, why are there two difficult? Okay, I like that. It, I think it, it adds some... Um... Even like casually, it adds like, oh, I can do it on a hard puzzle now and see how that goes. I will say the hard puzzles in the remake are. How do I put this? They are extraordinarily easy compared to the older Silent Hill game hard puzzle difficulties. Like the third Silent Hill game. That's, that's fair. The third, that's fair. The third Silent Hill game, you literally had to like <laughs> know Shakespeare to some degree to solve yep. the first puzzle. <laughs> Which, as a kid, I'm like, I don't know what these words even mean. Yeah. What am I, I supposed to do with that. this? Like, back in my day, you didn't have that's, the internet to look it up. That's what I'm saying. You didn't have, you, like, you didn't have game facts to, like, look it up. Like, you could buy the strategy guide and say, yeah. You, you had to open up that strategy yeah. guide. Turn to page 150. Thanks, Brady Games. <laughs> Or Prima but Games, yeah. or whichever one did it. In, um, but yeah, in Silent Hill 2 Remake, uh, hard puzzle difficulty is the easiest of the puzzle difficulties. Interesting. It's very simple. I, I did hard puzzle after my first playthrough of mm -hmm. the remake just to kind of see what the difference was. And I, I figured them out like 
probably the same amount of time, if not faster, than my first playthrough. Oh, wow. So I'm just like, you guys, you new players, you guys got it lucky. You guys got it made. And yes, we're running down a very, very, very long staircase right now. You got about another 20 minutes on the staircase, so what do you guys want to talk about? Uh, something, something. <laughs> what a thrill we have at home. <laughs> oh. We'll just cross this, the game streams right now. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so this is the second instant where you would need a melee weapon, hence the chainsaw. But uh, we're in this hole. We don't know where we're supposed to go. Oh, it's, just kidding. It's right here. Hey. Um, also, this room might look familiar to you guys who have played the remake. This is called Bug Room. You're going to usually Which pick this key up. Which is not skippable. No. You're going to pick that key up. You're going to go to this keypad. Uh, but in this, we're just going to pick it up. And then we're going to quick load. And then we're done here. We just have to leave. Because oh. the, that key is actually in our inventory. <laughs> so, All right. So yeah, no no, no bug room for us. Nice. Ta-da. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> um, skipping bug in remake is not possible. No. You have to brute force the code. And which it can be any combination of 239. We're going to go around this prison area that is several miles underground, it seems. Going to grab various items. Welcome to Silent Hill. I love how many cutscenes start with James either lying on the ground or <laughs> sitting on the ground. <laughs> like, sir, this is, I didn't this realize is, this, this is was a comedy. Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> what? This area in the remake is also like a hundred times longer than in the original. Yep. Also, we might just be getting out of the apartments in remake by now. What, what time are we at? <laughs> Uh, uh, 26, 26 in game and about 31 minutes. You're, in, uh, you're with Maria outside before you get to Heaven's Night. Just oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. You're not, you're not <laughs> even close to the hospital yet. You're close. But you're definitely not there. Oh, no. And this area is also almost finished. And grab a couple various items that we need to progress through the story. If you want to grab it, that'd be cool, James. I'm James. noticing a trend of James just saying, no, not picking anything up. Well, depending who you ask, he is the worst protagonist in the franchise. I Ooh. wholeheartedly disagree. Respectfully disagree <laughs> on that one. I, got, I don't know. I got some, ar some argue it's Murphy. Some argue it's, it's James. Henry. It's Henry. We all know it's Henry. I love Silent okay. Hill, but it's Henry. Okay. <laughs> I, I feel attacked now because I was going to say I got to <laughs> stick with my boy Henry. I love Silent Hill 4. I just don't like Henry for some reason. I just don't. But I also understand uh, like the like the awkward, yeah. like lonely person. Like I, I totally get it. I totally get it. Uh, that's it. It's like I, I, he just says what the I, he I just love, says what the hell too many times. <laughs> I, I love Henry, but it's it, when he gets on my nerves. I'm like, okay, no, I'm I'm dumping you for Harry. I will say yes. that's great. It is also really funny when Henry gets hit by wheelchairs in the hospital. It's really I mean, really yeah. funny. <laughs> <laughs> to me. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we're we're in a pretty long elevator right here, so I'm glad we have things to talk about. <laughs> Actually, but I think question. we can all agree that Heather is the best protagonist in the franchise. I can agree on that one. Yeah, yeah. I would I would I would third. So when <laughs> with um playing both the the OG slash remastered or uh, enhanced and then the remake, like how hard is it to switch playing the speed runs of each of them. Honestly, I have not touched the remake in a couple of days. And I will uh -oh. be tomorrow. Oops, and I will be tomorrow, so I'm actually really curious on how it's going to go. I don't think it'll be a problem only because you play them in very very different ways. That's fair. Yeah, I've I've played them back to back and it's not really that much of a difference. 
Um, now the real question is, how different is it playing the HD remaster? Oh, that's that is that is the whole topic we can discuss. <laughs> Which I, I actually ended up uh, playing the um, HDC the 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 remaster and. I played it with the new voices, and wow, I forgot how how good it was. And that's all I can respectfully say. <laughs> that is a very tactful way of saying drop it, and of saying you should you should play it if you are like having a bad day and you just want to have some laughs. I absolutely <laughs> recommend playing the HD remaster of this game with the new voices. You will not you will not be sad anymore. I will I will promise you that. Oh you will have a ball. Me. To be fair, I have never played Silent Hill 2 HD. I have only played Silent Hill 3 HD, and uh, that thing likes to crash in the middle of a run. Also has hilarious voice acting, because they actually don't have any of the, oops, any of the um, the old voices. Also, there's a boss mm. fight here. It's gone now. And it's now gone. Because we skipped it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Too dark to read the map, too dark to fight, too dark to the, boss. fight the boss. <laughs> I love it. To be fair, the remake version of that boss is a it's very nice improvement. Honestly, I it is my favorite part of the game. Is that whole part, I think. I, I think I think that the the, the uh, abstract daddy oh. fight in the remake is just fantastic. It, it is just so good. Fun fact, if you have the disc version on PS5 uh, and you don't patch it and just load it off the disc. Um, the walls breathe in that fight. What? <gasps> yep. Oh, here's Maria. Also, guys. Oh. Just so you know. Maria? Oh, hi, Maria. But more importantly, She's breathing walls. <laughs> <laughs> Maria's gone again. It's fine. Oh, rip. <laughs> it's just kind of her thing. It's like I, I've, I haven't picked up. The remake yet i'm it is on my list of games i desperately need to pick up but i'm now getting the disc version because i want to see this yeah i don't yeah we have the disc version here at home and i kind of want to see how that is oh just remember it takes a while because when installing it off the disc it likes to take its sweet time yeah oh, that sounds about I'm right patient. Okay, so here's our second boss fight. There's two phases to this fight, so I'm going to need absolute concentration during these parts, okay? Okay. That's phase one. At you. Oh, I, no. That, I'm seizing now, uncontrollably. Phase two. <laughs> phase two is a little bit more intense, so just give me one second. Let me concentrate, okay? Okay. Okay, it's over. Anyways. That is the hardest... <laughs> hardest series of boss fights in all of video games i will, I will not take further questions the the remake the remake um those that fight with eddie is is also very 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 good it's very good however this in the remake is terrible yes it I is it's it. so bad so um you can i'm just gonna you know turn a little bit i probably messed it up it's fine but you, you basically want to do two turns you're gonna turn right and you're gonna why did I turn? That's weird. Anyways, so it's you basically can like nickel and dime your like turning here to like get it precise with the light. Mm -hmm. In the remake, James will just turn 45 degrees in the in another direction. And it makes this part very irritating if you're not on course. Oh I think God. they did figure out the optimal way to do it, but like you have to go, you have to do 25 like pulls in one direction. And then you go right once, and then you go straight again. And it's just so weird because in this you can you can just casually kind of move your stick, and it'll just kind of line up, and it looks nice, and it's pretty, and it's neat. Yeah, I don't know why that that part of the remake is just it's, it's a no go. Yeah. But also, if real. you screw it up, it sends you all the way back to the beginning. It sure does. <laughs> it sure does. All right. Awesome pickup here. Nope. It's fine. That that's one of the hardest pickups in the game, in my opinion. I like how he said it. she was picking up everything else, but hardest pickup in the game, done. To be fair, I did mess it up. But uh Don't tell them that. Also, there's no one here hitting the hitting the hitting the piano. Mm. What happened here? That's weird. Mm. Oh, right. wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, she's just there now. It's okay. Don't okay. don't worry about it. That's fine. Um, 
Also, uh, our, a major skip is incoming. Let's see how many times it, it takes me to get. To this is called it. Hotel Skip, and essentially we're gonna we're gonna read this map that we don't actually have. I'm gonna go up here. Hey, oh, I did no. not grab. I thought I got Ooh. it. It's okay. Cool. There we go. So essentially, nice. we fall into the staircase. Now we're just going to run through the void of the hotel for a minute. We're going to see a fight with Eddie, I think. Yep, there it is. Cool. See ya. It's just kind of it just kind of happens. It's fine. Cool. Now we're in the basement. With all of our stuff, which isn't supposed to happen. Exactly. <laughs> so now just we're just love... down in the basement. Yeah, we're just down here now. It's fine. I just like when suddenly, hello. Yeah, hi, it's me again. That's Silent Hill on VHS. Thanks, Christoph Gans, for that. Fun fact: Silent Hill One is not available on VHS because VHS stopped production in 2005. The last VHS film was David Cronenberg's A History of Violence. I actually didn't know that. What? Huh? What? Thank you. I feel so educated right now. Yeah, I feel like smarter now. Right. Now I'm just grabbing a couple items. We need that key to get into the bar area up here. Now for one of the most infamous items in Silent Hill 2 history. It's our can of light bulbs. Why does that exist? I could not tell you. I have light I bulbs say, ever come in cans? Who knows? <laughs> I don't think that's a, that's the thing. I will say I could not find the light bulb in a can in the remake. I don't think it exists. <gasps> oh, that's rude. I don't think it exists. Hmm. Taking out all the fun. Now it's not worth playing, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> Everything else is fine, don't, but no. Don't, yeah, don't waste your money. Oops. No light, no light Hello. bulbs in a can. Rip. Just gonna grab a couple quick items. Again, running around dodging enemy monsters and grabbing keys. Welcome to Silent Hill speedrunning. <laughs> Can light bulbs Welcome for snacks to hell. on the go? <laughs> so basically, we, we know that the solution for that briefcase is hell. It can be, I think, like 25 or something different combinations. But again, because we're on set C, we know the answer. Now we're going to use all these little music boxes we've been picking up for this lovely little music box we have right here. Ooh. Oh, he turned. Of course he did. He's James. Of course he mm -hmm. did. Now we're going to quick save and run over here because we're not supposed to do that. Get that key. Grab our key for the hotel, hotel stairwell. And we have to watch uh, Silent Hill on VHS. Ooh. Ah, uh, an infamous hitbox. Luckily, we don't have to deal with the hitbox in the remake. I know, it's so nice. However, we are stuck watching part of the cutscene. No matter yeah. what. Right, because of the loading. They do that so they can hmm. load in, like, the whole rest of the game, I think. Confusing door puzzle. That's not confusing. Done. Now we see the hotel for what it really is. And it was on fire, and there was a fire here, and it's all it's flooded, flooded. And, and yeah. I was about to say, your definition of fire and my definition fire, yeah, of fire like, are slightly like this, different. This looks like a fire. <laughs> there was a fire is the terminology I should have used. Oh, but wait, a fire. Oh, there's a fire. There's a fire. There it is. Okay. That's a fire. Bye, Angela. <laughs> See, fire department, don't cross the oh, okay. line. Okay, yeah, exactly. that's fair. Now we know. We're coming up to our- Also, these enemies, far more annoying in the remake. Oh, the mandarins are are a pain mm. in the remake. Second, or, second to last boss fight. They it's share over. a health bar. Yeah. I don't think it's over. It's over. There, now now it's actually oh, over. Wait, oh. Yeah, they, they gave they oh. gave up. They, they gave up forever. <laughs> Why not? I mean, to be <laughs> fair, they took a spear and they took this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I don't know anymore. <laughs> they look. The game is logical, all right? Mary? Apparently. <laughs> We're going to be coming oh, up yeah. to our final boss fight now. I brought you some flowers. Flowers? One any damn flowers. One of the things about the remake is I don't like that you don't hear James as part of the conversation. I was thinking about that earlier, actually. Mm. And actually, with our with our favorite pair of T posing pyramid heads, do they share health bar in the remake too? Yes, they do. Yes. But do they T pose in the remake? Not as much. It's not oh. as much of a deliberate like T pose. No, they've learned. However, in 1.0 oh. dog ending, James T poses. He does. <gasps> he does. He does. He absolutely does. All also, right, boss like we could be getting leave ending. Mary? One way yep. you can tell mm -hmm. who you're fighting is if they're over by the window, that's Maria. If they're on the bed, that is Mary. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, it was too close. That's fine. You can Enough also time. not hit uh, Maria slash Mary on with the chainsaw. You cannot. I actually no, never tried. You cannot. I never tried that. Nice. That's it. Oh, hey. <laughs> that was it. GGs. Thank you. <laughs> now the question is, where would you be in the remake right now? Forgive me. <laughs> At, like forty-five, 45 minutes. minutes in, you're you're still in the hospital, I think. Oh god. I think you're still in the yeah, hospital. You're, uh, yeah, you're in the hospital still. I wanted the pain. Oh, DG so. But uh, in, in all seriousness, we've been memeing on this game and on the remake That's and all that, but but in all honesty, if you've never played this suffer. game, um you absolutely should because it is a masterpiece no. of psychological horror. Um, That's not true. And mm -hmm. it's just it's just fantastic. You, said you didn't want to die. 100% hard agree on that one. I, I, I love the Sound Hell franchise so much. It's just, it's just so good. And hold on. How many... As we're waiting to see the important number here... Mm -hmm. I'm going to skip through that. No one wants to hear the letter. Uh, I understand that. No one wants to hear that. Not not, uh, not here. No one wants to rude. cry tonight. I'm not doing rude. that to people. That's not, that's not fair. But no, um, we'll get to that important number. But yeah, uh, 3804, that's not too shabby for... For how not grinding this as badly. Um, but no, honestly, everybody that worked on uh, the Enhanced Edition uh, poured their heart and soul into into making Silent Hill 2 amazing looking, accessible for basically anybody. And mm -hmm. and it's it's awesome because Silent Hill 2 is not a cheap game to purchase. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have a computer, you can play it. Like, that's just, <laughs> that's just how it is. It doesn't cost any money. Like... It, and everybody just deserves to experience this game, and it is well worth your time. And again, if you've only played the remake, because I know I know people who've only played the remake, please play this game because you it it will. Yes, it looks dated, but this is a phenomenal way to experience that original game that came out 20 years ago. But um, yeah, I, as always, thanks for having me, Saga. I really appreciate it. Um, Abby, how can how can they find you? Um, well, you can you can find me again at twitch.tv slash Abby's Corner, but you should follow Death Tropes at twitch.tv slash Death Tropes. Um, also, I'm banned from horror games, just so everybody <laughs> knows that I'm banned from horror <laughs> games currently for the next May, may I introduce days. you then to the quiet man? Uh, oh my is gosh, that a horror? Right. <laughs> it's a horrible game. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I am yeah. a peddler of the worst game of 2018, but yeah. That game is cool, okay? I watched it. It's not bad, okay? <laughs> I watched the run. It is not bad. Um, but uh, but no, yeah, um, you can find me at twitch.tv slash uh, deathtropes. I do a lot of Silent Hill content, um, a lot of remake content currently because I've been speedrunning that a lot. Um, I do a lot of horror games and stuff. Uh, also, shout out everybody that speedruns any Silent Hill game. It's it's awesome. All of them are so much fun. Um, shout out Clock Tower, uh, also, and just thanks for having me again. I really appreciate it. Agreed. And thank you so much, Death Ropes, uh, Abby's, uh, everybody that's been on today. Y'all are absolutely amazing. And something I was said in chat really quickly, which is 100 percent true for Silent Hill, to uh, the game handles very serious topics with expert nuance. It's it is such a fantastically built game and written. They'll just. Play it. It's awesome. 
but give GG's one more time for everybody for the amazing runs. And for those of you that might have missed out on either early runs in Express Lane or Awfully Silly before this, we have got you, boo! Make sure you stay tuned. We're, we're going to just replay both of those shows right after this. And then also, you might want to tune in tomorrow night, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, for a Monster Hunter World Iceborne special. And after that, we're going to be doing some speedrun.